Oops. You get that uh, after meal, that postprandial lull that settles in, right, right after lunch. And so you have, to, you have to really bring the big guns from a formatting perspective post right after lunch to kick post people. Right. Post what? Postprandial. <laughs> you eat and your body's responded, yeah. Read the book, football I'm player. I'm just kidding, Gil. <laughs> All right, so we have a hero and friend. <laughs> Steve's with us, and we're, we're excited to, to have Steve Tishman. And um, I'm sure he brings good news with bundles. I think he bought bags of cash, right? Oh, yeah. All Something like cash. that. All, cash, yeah. All right, tag, you're it, sir. All right, well, thank you very much. It's, it's always uh, a pleasure to get the post-lunch slot. Um, <laughs> everybody's a little groggy after uh, a, a big lunch. But, um, so is there a remote control for the slides that, that I'm supposed to do, or somebody advance the slides? <sighs> Somebody's going to advance them for you. And I apologize that you don't have these slides in your notebook yet. Um, some of them will be a little bit of an eye chart, but yeah. but it's publicly available information. It's on our website, and uh, but you'll be getting the slides. I think Dave will be sending them out, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So you go on to the next one. So this uh, this is our budget trends uh, slide. You can see how we've um, how the budgets racked up from 18, 19, and then our 20 requests. And um, and then down the left is just the pie chart that shows our, our three accounts. So we have a defense account and two non-defense accounts, which is the, the UED and D fund, which takes care of the gaseous diffusion plants, UED and D's uranium enrichment D and D, and then the non-defense. So the reason that's important is we can't move money once it's appropriated between accounts. We can reprogram within accounts. But it also shows you the size of the pot and who we're competing against, you know, within the federal government to get funds. So the defense, you know, you're obviously the Defense Department and within the department NSA. So we're we're all competing for those funds. And then the non-defense is the rest of the the rest of the federal government. But within uh, DOE, it's science and NE and others. So when the department's formulating its budget and we're getting our targets to work with, you know, there's a lot of competition for that money. So when you look at our request in the, in the last few years, our request has been, you know, around six and a half billion. And that's what, you know, we, uh, we've supported again in, in uh, 2020. But then you look at the enacted level and it's been you know, steadily or, you know, around 7.1 billion, which is, you know, certainly great for the program to have the additional funding to be able to execute. And so when you look, you know, when you look at um, how that's played out at the sites, I'll go through in a little bit more detail, but it does present some, you know, some unique challenges because sometimes, you know, our, um, you know, we've requested a certain amount, we get, uh, we get additional money, and if it's you know, several hundred million, it takes some time for the site to get those contractors on board and get that work in the queue and get up. Even you know, even under Recovery Act, when we got six billion dollars, you know, in um, you know in one year, you know, it took us you know six months to kind of get the the, the uh, hiring going, and then another. I think we only spent you know we spent under a billion that first year. So. We do have a lot of, um, this year, just looking at, you know, because of the plus up, we got an 18. Most of that, because of when the budget was passed, was towards the end of the year. Uh, then 19, we got the budget enacted right away, which was great, because it's, you know, it's been 22 years since we've had an enacted budget um, to start the fiscal year. But we got, you know, another tranche of money. So we're, we're in the process now of, of really ramping up to spend that. Um, so go on to the next slide. You can see, you won't be able to read this, but if you have the details, it's, it just shows you by site. So when you get those, you'll be able to tell. In, in all, most cases, um, we're getting funding above what we've requested. And, um, and I'll talk to some of the exceptions as we go site by site. Okay, the next slide. 
So just, and Mark may have mentioned this, but just going through really to emphasize some of the, the main priorities for this 2020 budget, um, looking at uh, at Savannah River, and we probably, Gil might have mentioned this earlier, but you know, the salt waste processing facility is the, is the facility that will let us uh, substantially ramp up the, west, the rest of the liquid waste treatment there. We have, we've treated about 10 million gallons of salt waste. And I think if you look at the big picture, there's probably 100 million more to go. The salt waste processing running up to 9 million gallons a year that allow us to get done in you know, 10, 11 years of processing. So it's, uh, it's an important facility for the liquid waste program. And it's, um, it's going through its um, uh, commissioning right now. So we're looking at next December for it to start up. <clears throat> then on, for WIP, the, the ventilation system, this is another critical infrastructure for WIP, obviously, for all the sites that are shipping transuranic waste. This is a key, plus it supports other departmental missions like NNSA. So getting uh, the ability to do more shipments per week there is really, it's critical to have that additional ventilation system work. Then uh, direct feed, low activity waste approach, and I think we've talked about that hampered um, a little bit already, the importance of being able to demonstrate treatment of, of uh, vitrification of glass there. So that project is, is on track for, uh, we're actually trying to bring it in before December, but officially the, the mosque comes December 23rd, uh, uh, 2023, I mean, and then, um, um, at Oak Ridge, we're building this uh, outfall 200 mercury treatment facility, and that's um, at the edge of the Y12 site with the idea of being able to capture mercury that may come out of some of the um, buildings, the excess facilities that we'll be demolishing on the Y12 site. Um, one of the separation processes there used mercury, and there's um, a huge quantity of it that's uh, trapped in those buildings and under those buildings. Let's go on to the next one. So, um, Mark has probably hit on some of this as well, but you know, um, with our EM1, um, Ann White has really been emphasizing, you know, we, we can do more with the funding that we have. And she's, you know, very um, adamant that, you know, we, we show progress. In fact, with the plus ups that we've gotten for the last, you know, two years, you know, she wants us to be able to highlight, hey, where's, here's what we're doing with that extra money. Um, you know, she's looking at all kinds of ways, you know, both at headquarters and in the field of how we can be more um, completion focused. And, um, you know, and kind of getting back, and I've mentioned before, when, you know, I've had conversations sort of looking at the lessons learned from Rocky Flats or um, Mound and Fernald, you know, what things work well there as far as accelerating the work and can we use some of that within our contracting approaches and other approaches to get work done. Can you go on to the next? Um, here's some of the progress that we've made uh, to date and we've um, completed closure of the D Ash area project at Savannah River and we've transferred land back at uh, Portsmouth, I think which was mentioned earlier. Uh, we completed the demolition of the vitrification facility at West Valley, and we're moving on uh, to look at uh, demolition of the main plant. Uh, we demolished the Toxic Substances Control Act incinerator at Oak Ridge. In fact, that was one of the first projects I worked on when I came to DOE in 93. So it's amazing. You know, when you feel like we haven't made progress, you have to just step back and look at what you worked on years ago. And we were just. Um, treating the liquids from Portsmouth, Paducah, and, and Oak Ridge at the time, and um, now that's done. Um, we're continuing to work on um, processing the material um, from the Canadian material and also foreign research reactor fuel that comes into H Canyon, uh, or to be processed through H Canyon. Um, we're building the next uh, salt waste disposal unit at Savannah River, which is you know key to being able to operate SWPF. You have to have those salt stone disposal units built, um, and they take a couple years to build, and they could be filled up at about a year and a half when you run at nine million gallons a year. So we need to have those done ahead of schedule. 
or head of the SWPF anyway. Um, we've we did break ground on the uh, the WIPS um, ventilation system, and that project will um, its goal is to be done by the, by 2022 to build a support ramped up work in the repository. We're constrained right now by the fact that the current ventilation system can only um, move so much air through the repository. So you have to decide, you know, if you're going to be emplacing waste that takes vehicles. Um, you know, they, they produce exhaust gas, so you can only have so much of that going on. And then on another shift, you do the mining to be able to move, the, to, to make space for the additional waste. So we mine as we go there because it's the salt kind of continually creeps in. So with um, the new ventilation system, we'll be able to run those operations in parallel. And then we're, um, let's see, we're, we're moving the sludge out of the K Basin area, which is uh, almost on a, there's a few more, but it'll be done this year. There's a few more canisters to go. Um, and then we're um, working, we've been turning over facilities on waste treatment plant to do startup and for the low activity waste system. Okay, can we go on to the next? So you may have seen our dollar bill chart before. This just kind of breaks out, you know, where the money's going roughly within the program. Um, the, um, out of the six and a half billion dollar request, you can see, it, you know, the purple is the nuclear materials, special nuclear materials and fuel. The light blue is the high level uh, radioactive tank waste. The red is true and solid waste. Green is facility D and D. Orange is soil and the groundwater, and then site services are in blue. And then below that, there's a little check mark just to show you how those things, um, which one of those things is at each of the sites. All right, let's go on to the next. So this uh, Savannah River site, our request is is 1.643 billion dollars, and the goals are to. Uh, complete removal of the materials that are in the 235F facility. That facility um, um, produced plutonium, or, or processed the plutonium that came out of F Canyon. And we've been slowly cleaning out the glove boxes and reducing the risk in that building so that it eventually can be uh, d and um, I mentioned liquid waste, so getting salt waste processing facility up and running is, is one of the key things we're trying to do. And in addition to, of course, that running, you have to add, at a startup rate, you have to have waste feed prepared, so there's more funding for tank farms to have the waste feed, and you have to have the salt stone um, treatment unit running at a higher capacity, too. So all of those facilities have to be staffed up by nuclear <coughs> trained, cleared workers, and it's taking, uh, you, know, you, have to, you have to get those people on board like two years ahead of time before you need them. So we've been working towards ramping those folks up. And then, as I mentioned, the salt stone units, you have to build those as well. And then um, we also have a new project, new construction project, which is to build the um, advanced um, manufacturing collaborative facility, which is going to be an off-site lab located at um, University of South Carolina and Aiken campus, similar to how Office of Science has national labs at um, Stanford, Berkeley, you know, other universities around the, you know, university land, we're going to have a, a, EM will have a lab on, uh, you know, on a college campus. Okay, next. Okay, so Washington, uh, combined budget of 2.1 billion, 1.392 is for, um, for the Office of River Te Protection, and that is to support, again, the low activity waste um, component of the waste treatment plan and to be able to get that operational by December of 2023. Um, it also includes design and construction of the, um, at the uh, facility upgrades for like the 222S laboratory, the 242A evaporator, and the effluent treatment facility. And these are all facilities that are going to support operations of the waste treatment plan. Um, and then we're also working on the uh, TISCR, which is tank side cesium removal system, and this is part of the uh, low activity waste pre treatment system. But this will allow us to take tank waste and feed it to low activity waste because it'll it'll make it uh, 
basically make a contact handle. Um, we're also working towards retrieval of some of the single shell tanks. Uh, we have the AX 102 farm, and there's consent decree milestones associated with that. And um, we also have some contract, um, new contracts in progress out there, and I think we're looking at July timeframe right on those. Um, another effort where we had funded this in technology development, but um, the Hill has asked us to fund this directly on, within the ORP control point, and that is, it's a test bed initiative, but it's an initiative that the department's looking at of um, alternative ways to dispose of the low activity waste from the tanks. So if we can demonstrate we can grout this and ship it off site to a commercial disposal facility where it meets their waste acceptance criteria, that'll reduce the amount of waste that has to be treated on site. So over on the Richland side, and Richland provides um, all the infrastructure for ORP and does the remediation work there, groundwater work and D&D uh, &D as well on the site. Um, they'll continue doing so on the groundwater treatment and they'll, uh, they're working on the 24 building, which is a uh, hot cell facility located closer into, into the Richland area that has contamination underneath it because of a leak that was in the hot cell. So, that work will be ongoing. Um, I could pause if there's any questions on Hanford or Savannah River. I know those are two big sites, or I can keep moving on. Did you have questions? Or, oh. I do, but if you wait till the end. Want to go I through? do have one, though, Steve, okay, if sure. you don't mind. Um, I know that the test bed initiative is now going to be moved over. It's going to be moved over under the budget for the site, mm -hmm. rather than being funded separately. And, uh, and it's not clear to me that it isn't going to impact other pieces of the puzzle that, you know, that, we, that we're working on right now. Do you know? So, well, the, you know, the Hill asked us to specifically to fund it in a separate control point. So it is a separate control point from um, the other Hanford work. So it won't, it should not impact you know, it's not in the tank farms operations. It's it's within the ORP site, but it's it's separate. I, okay. I guess I line. thought I'd understood that it was coming over underneath the, you know, into our integrated priority list. Well, it would. It would be it in there. Still will. And, and, it yeah, and eventually, because if if you know if it's successful, then well, yeah. you know it'd be yeah. it would really be it's not going to be a technology development activity. Eventually, it would just be a. The right part of your operations, disposal, treatment and disposal operations. So. Okay. Thanks. Sure. All right. Next one. Idaho. So our Idaho request is $348 million, and this allows us to complete <coughs> exhumation of the, um, the buried waste that's in the, uh, the burial ground there that's, that we've built these accelerated uh, retrieval project enclosures. And we then have you know equipment inside there that remove the soil and the drums and then those drums get um, packaged and shipped to WIP or disposed of as low level waste depending on the, how the waste assays out. But that work will um, basically be wrapping up in 20 and then the, the waste because of the um, backlog basically to get waste into WIP it'll be about 2023 before that's done. Uh, we're also Finishing up testing of the uh, integrated waste treatment unit, which is um, designed to treat the remaining um, sodium bearing waste, liquid waste there. And it's going through its test phase, it's, I guess its final test phase is now. Um, and then we'll, we're also, this was mentioned earlier by the, the IDO uh, folks, but the advanced mixed waste treatment facility, which was built to do super compaction of the waste drums and, you know, allow more waste drums to go per shipment to whip. That's finished up its mission and that'll be ramping down in the next year and then in 20 we'll start regular closure on that facility. Let's go on to Oak Ridge. So our Oak Ridge request uh, is 429 million and that is split out between um, UED and D and defense. Um, the UED and D funding is for com to complete um, the East Tennessee Technology Park, formerly K25 site, uh, remaining facilities there, and then 
begin the uh, soil and groundwater remediation work. Um, that work likely it's it's going to be sometime between 20 and 22, but it's uh, it's on on track. Um, also, complete processing of the contact handle, the remote handle, legacy true waste. Um, that's um, be able to ship that to WIP. Um, we also have a project to um, modify one of the existing facilities at Oak Ridge National Lab 2026, which will allow us to process the remaining U-233 material. Uh, some of that material was able to be direct disposed. Um, the, the remaining has to be processed, and that will um, begin in the 21-22 uh, timeframe. And then um, I mentioned the mercury treatment facility earlier. That's um, key to being able to do excess facility work at Y12. Um, and then we're working on the next disposal cell for the um, on, on site disposal cell to do uh, disposal there. So for the work that's at Y12 and ORNL, we'll need that, that next disposal cell. But to finish up ETTP, we have sufficient capacity. Uh, at the existing cell. Okay, next. Okay, Ohio, we have, uh, at Portsmouth, we have 426 million. And this will allow us to continue um, doing the equipment removals from the processing buildings there. We have, um, we have three large buildings. One of them, all the equipment's been removed and it's uh, demolition ready. The other two are in process. Um, and we're also building the on-site disposal cell. So having the disposal cell done will allow us to begin uh, doing the demolition of the, of the first facility and then, we'll all, then the next one will be ready and then the next one. We also process the depleted uranium hexafluoride through the, uh, the Dove 6 facility and we'll continue operating that. Next. Okay, our Paducah request is 277 million. And there we're really just getting started on the clean out work of those facilities. Um, we have um, the C400 building is the cleaning building. And our plans are to demolish that, remove the uh, trichloroethylene plume that's underneath that building. Um, but then we have to continue going through the other uh, large gas diffusion plant buildings, remove the deposits, remove the equipment, and uh, that one's, most of that work is scheduled for further out. So once, because that's all in the same account, the UVD and D account, you know, we have funding at Oak Ridge that's going to the TTP site. Is that ramps down? There'd be more headroom in that account to accelerate Portsmouth possibly, or Paducah depending on, you know, uh, which one, you know, which opportunities are supported. But the, the total of that account um, is uh, what's available to do the UVD&D. So we're, we just have to balance those, those three out. And Paducah also has the Duff 6 plant, which is operating to, to treat the uh, de depleted uranium export. Next slide. So in New Mexico, we have, um, I mentioned, Carlsbad, their budget's 398, and this allows us to support not only about 10 shipments per week, and as I mentioned, we're, we're putting the infrastructure in to build the ramp up closer to 17 shipments, which is what, you know, nominally what we would operate at, um, including building the safety significant ventilation system and also construction of a new shaft, which will provide, um, you know, waste handling capability, allow us to you know, continue it to uh, expand as we, um, you know, as we operate. Um, and we have a number of, we've talked a little bit about, or people were discussing the infrastructure earlier, we've um, put together actually a separate PBS for the site to highlight some of the infrastructure improvements in cases where we have specific projects that we need to do, things like the fire loop for the building. A lot of our um, surface facilities uh, infrastructure is also uh, ready to be replaced. So we put together, you know, a priority list, and the, they're working those off. At Los Alamos, our request is 195 million. 
Um, this allows us to um, commence operations of two of three uh, true processing lines to uh, have waste prepped and ready for WIP. Um, it allows us to um, um, you know, ship waste to WIP as well as start characterization of the, or complete characterization of the uh, RDX plume and um, prevent mitigation of chromium plume off-site by implementing a hydraulic barrier. And then at Sandia, we have um, uh, reached a record of decision to install some uh, groundwater wells there, and this funding will less, let, allow us to implement that. Next. So New York State, um, West Valley, it's a $78 million request. And um, this will allow us to continue deactivation work on the main plant. And we're, we're looking at um, the process for maybe being able to do demolition of that within this current uh, contract period. And then demolish the remaining excess facilities there and ship the waste off site. And at SPRU, that's $15 million. That's primarily, uh, the work there is, is complete. We're just doing, um, the remaining waste has to be shipped off site. Okay, next, Nevada. So it's a $61 million request. And this allows us to um, continue doing remediation work there, and including closing uh, some corrective action units. It allows us to um, install uh, some additional uh, monitoring wells, and it includes the operation of our waste disposal facility there. Next. So at Utah, we have 36 million for the MOAB site, which is, this is to move mill tailings from uh, the um, site that's right along the Colorado River up to Crescent Junction, which is the disposal cell that we built for that. And this allows us to do two, two uh, trains per week. Okay, next. And we have, uh, California, we have the ETEC, uh, Energy Technology Engineering Center, that's about 18 million. And um, this allows us to um, do demolition of the remaining buildings there and do some groundwater corrective measures. And at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, which is an NSA site, um, we had gotten funding in 18 and a little bit more in 19 to start demolition work there. We're in the process of putting a contract in place to do the demolition work. And the first building is this P80 uh, uh, pool type reactor facility. Uh, that's the highest priority one based on the, uh, our report to Congress that looks at all of the excess facilities but then we'll begin working off some of the other excess facilities there as well. Next. Um, so now I, I can open it up for discussion. I have other slides that I can, I can draw from if you want to have uh, discussions about what we're doing with the, the plus up money that we got in 18 and 19, or we can talk to schedule, we can talk a little bit about the planning effort or whatever you'd like to talk about. All right, let's start with Susan, please. Thanks so much for your presentation. I really appreciate it, Steve. Um, if, if we can go back to about the third slide where it's the detail of what we did in 19, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, that detailed slide. When you continually say, we request, who's we? Is it <coughs> OMB? Is it DOE? Is it, what does that mean? because the sites send a request for money to satisfy all of their legal obligations and contractual obligations, and that money goes to DOE, and then DOE does something, and then it goes to OMB, right? And then OMB does something, and then it gets submitted. So when you say, we requested, is that the money that the sites requested? Well, when I say we, that's, <coughs> that's the president's budget. So okay. So it's the... After all of that Right. So stuff. there's the whole deliberative process that the right. federal government goes through to, okay. to determine. And then we get, you know, we get targets 
that we look at, and then we. And who decides the targets? It's well. That one. So there's depa yeah. there's departments to so, uh, so the department's given a target, you know, from OMB, right? And then we have targets within then the within the department there, you know, there's um, targets. So we have an opportunity to appeal within the department. We have uh, opportunity to appeal within OMB, and you know, the, there's discussions, and then out of that comes the president's budget. Okay. That makes sense because when you say we request, a lot of folks and the public assume that's what the site requested to meet the obligations that have been agreed to. And that's not who the we is. It's all of those other peoples along the steps, right? Yeah, ultimately, you know, it's the president's budget request at the end. And, right. And that's, you know, what we, okay. we call we. Okay. So when you say plus up, it's a little confusing to those of us because it's not nearly what the site requested. So, and it doesn't meet the obligations for our group as well as the rest of the sites that are, are agreed to. So that's why it's a little bit confusing. So the yeah, plus up I was referring to was above the president's request, yeah. what was enacted by okay. Congress was. Great, I just wanted to make that clear. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure that's what we were talking about. The other, you talked about the waste isolation pilot plant. And I always ask this question, is it still going to be open to accept Hanford True? <laughs> because there were negotiations that were going to go on, and we're last in line. So I always, always ask that question to make sure that they're still going to be open. And I know there's something about the Land Withdrawal Act, and you have to change or whatever. Is is all that still a go? So <laughs> the simple answer is yes, but the. Um, there is sufficient capacity, and the point, you know, the we've talked about, mm -hmm. you know, a longer time period okay. for it to be open. I mean, the department will also, you know, the NSA mission will continue to generate transuranic waste, right, as, as well as other programs. So, you know, there aren't any. I think the original 2030 date was, you know, um, you know, basically to establish some parameters to it, but I, I right. don't think that's a so it's it has been established to be later now? It's been moved? Um, I don't know if we've announced a... So I thought it was moved about. to like 2050-something. I think that's correct. Yeah, okay. That's what I've seen too, yeah. I, just, but it, I guess I didn't see that announcement. It could be later I, than that too. Okay. Yeah. Great. I just wanted... We have a lot of true and we really want it to go <laughs> to the appropriate place. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so uh, we've got Sh Shelly and then Dennis and around to uh, Gil. But Shelly, before you get going, just want to remind everybody at 2.15, we have to pause for public comments. Um, with the meeting being live streamed, there is the capability, if you are watching at home, that you can provide comment online, correct? There's an email port, right, to submit written comment if you would like to do that. So you can do that for anybody watching. I think Steve's wife's watching at home, so <laughs> everyone say hi to Steve's wife. But uh, um, if, if anyone watching would like to provide a comment, that is an acceptable means, and it will be added to the meeting minutes, and we'll get that taken care of. But uh, 2.15, we'll have to take that break. All right, thanks, Shelley. Okay. Thank you. So I want to pull that thread a little bit more on the transuranic, because uh, when you say there's enough room, it's enough room for what's been identified as true currently. We have buckets of true at Hanford that have not been declared true uh, because they're pre-70 and have not been exhumed and, and according to law won't be in considered true until they are or if they are. So um, I guess the question that bothers me, that worries me, is that we won't we won't get the money uh, to characterize those trenches, parts of those 42 miles of trenches that we have that are unlined, that, uh, that we need to characterize in order to know uh, what's really in there. And uh, so uh, I'm wondering, and I know you put, maybe you, you know, maybe this is a moot point, maybe we can't even talk about it because it's so far ahead, I'm too far ahead of the, in the thinking. So, so it's, it's okay, because the issue is, is is in order for us to do, 
to complete the Hanford cleanup and do the safe cleanup up there. We're going to have to characterize the environmental situation up there, which includes the materials that are, are buried to make sure that they're not going to go um, be transported to harm human health and the environment. And so it, we won't be done up there until we make sure that those burial, <coughs> those old burial places are properly characterized and are being dispositioned in, in the right method. Now whether or not that means that they're dug up or that a portion of them dug up mm -hmm. or you know that the material because it's not migrating stays there in place with a cover or I, I'm not sure where we're going to get with regard to it, what the ultimate but that is part of the federal government's responsibility to make sure that that you know situation is is addressed in a manner that is safe to human health and the environment. Okay. So, and, 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 and the issue is, yes, the, if we have an unknown quantity of material, can we say whether or not WIP will, will the, the capacity to address an unknown quantity of material? Um, so we're going to have to work through that. <laughs> you know, at right now we believe that from what we know it will, but, um, you know, we'll continue to work through that, that situation. There is also you know, additional potentials to expand WIP, but we've not decided that we needed to do that, and it would have to go through an entire regulatory process to allow for that. Okay, thank you. And then I had one more question, and that's at the other end, and that's at Carlsbad. And I'm concerned because what we saw when we met down there was pretty alarming in terms of the oil and gas industry. And I'm really wondering about what is the need at WIP for workers and that it's not being met. How many? And um, do, do we stand, do we need to worry about the, the potential for having to scale back because we can't meet uh, uh, the demands for FTEs for that um, site? So it, it's more of a, at what cost will it be? It's not an issue of whether okay. or not there will be workers that are available to do it. The issue is, is what will that cost us? And we've okay. seen, okay. you know, costs for things like shafts and stuff to be, you know, infrastructure projects to be increased in cost down there because of just the competition for labor okay. and materials and stuff like that is different. Okay. So it'll just cost more. It's just gonna, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, the contractor that's doing the ventilation uh, confinement system bought a hotel in Carlsbad and is refurbishing it to get the workforce there because there's the, because of the housing shortage there. Well, we couldn't stay there. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's too expensive. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Shelley. All right, Dennis? Steve, I uh, would like to take you up on uh, what, uh, what is the disposition of the plus ups. Sure. So that's in. So if you go to slide, um, the backup slides. So, one other thing that we have available to you that. that it's going to make available is this as it's a booklet and what the booklet does is called progress through action and for each one of the individual states it gives what the base program was what the additional congressional support was by year for 18 and 19 and and lists what those activities are so besides his presentation just letting you know you will get this book along with the uh, year in review. Um, so go forward a couple more. Let's see. One more. One more. That's not it. That's good. There Thank it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep, so the, the um, this is more focused on 19, but the, the 19 level, the um, 574 million above the request level, um, this kind of highlights some of the the additional things. So at Oak Ridge, it was a $238 million increase, and that's split, again, between the accounts. So for, for UED&D, for the gas diffusion plant, that was a, 
a plus up there that's, um, and that's why I mentioned earlier about us being able to close maybe in 20, maybe 21, maybe 22. It's because of this additional funding and, um, and, and being able to keep, you know, get the, the D and D workers. We have a well-trained D and D uh, workforce there, and they've been going to town on those facilities. And ideally, we also have been we've got plus up on the excess facility side at at Y12 to do biology complex, and then um, we could also shift over to ORNL and start doing some work there. So ideally, that workforce would be able to we'd be able to take advantage of that tr uh, skilled workforce and have them take that on. Um, but the, the funding was allowing us to do that as well as do the um, the 230 the the 2026 facility and be able to process the 233 um, uh, construction of the true um, sludge test facilities, which will um, we're doing sort of a mock-up prototype before we go into scaled-up production there. Um, allows us to, to ramp up, you know, it gives us additional funding for the mercury treatment facility, which will allow us to, um, again, do the Y12 excess facility work. Um, another thing that it helped with is there's, EM covers the infrastructure at ORNL for the liquid gaseous waste system and the, um, uh, the for the, the liquids that come out of the hyper facility and that get processed go down to the Mount Valley tank. So we're, we have that in the gaseous waste system for the lab. So it's allowed us to put some money into those infrastructure systems there, which are, you know, like all of your your facilities are old. Um, and let's see, Richland, 207 million, and that allows us to continue the D&D &D of the uh, plutonium finishing plant with the goal of getting that to slab on grade. Um, it also provided additional funding, which was used to stabilize Purex Tunnel 2 um, and complete clean out of the 324 hot cells facilities. That's the one I mentioned that um, had a leak below the facility that we're then going to work on uh, pursuing, you know, remediation of that uh, contaminated soil underneath. Um, let's see, we're also doing, uh, well, that's the structural modifications within that facility. Uh, so that we can then go in and remove the hot cell floor and dig up the soil from within the building that's contaminated. Um, it also allows us to start planning for the, the 100K West uh, basin characterization and dewatering. So that's the facility that's storing the sludge. As we move that sludge up to a uh, tea plant, then we'll, the next stage of work would be to dewater the basins and then eventually stabilize those. Um, allowed us to do some other infrastructure upgrades for the that'll support direct feed low activity waste. Um, you know, again, that Hanford's an old site, and so roads, power, water, all of those systems have to be upgraded to support operations of the, um, as well as tank farm systems have to be upgraded to support feed of the low activity waste. Should I pause for a Hanford specific question while we're still on Hanford? Just a real quick one, thank you. The, the money that's coming forward for the D and D on PFP is that also going to include characterization underneath the slab prior to turning that over to uh, the surplus side of the house? You know? I don't know specifically, but I can I can find out for you. And ancillary facilities. So, so PFP. you want to know if the character it is, it is PFP. Yes. If we'll be able to do right. characterization yeah. of the soils under yeah. PFP yeah. and the there's surrounding. a crib right by there, and yeah. Okay. Oh, it, yeah. Well, that's a whole separate unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, it was 134 million plus up at river protection, um, which allows us to and, and the funding for the. Um, Waste treatment plan is split up by a control point, and, and specifically, we got funding. In fact, when we get plussed up, these are all within congressional controls, and mm -hmm. it's pretty clear what they want us to do in most of these. So, this one was for uh, to uh, continue design of the high-level waste facility for the uh, waste treatment plant, and 
uh, also accelerate some of the tank farm, tank farm work to um, be able to supply waste to the low activity waste plant, do um, the retrievals and AX farm. Okay, Idaho, there was 84 million that allows us to um, work on uh, for the uh, integrated waste treatment unit. Um, there's an upgrade needed to support canister and uh, cell decontamination that wasn't a part of the original design. But based on the fact that it looks like it's going to be operating for about three years, um, we believe we need this uh, decontamination facility as part of the operation. Um, also, additional funding allowed us to run additional shifts for advanced mixed waste treatment facility and accelerate the cleanup, or the remaining uh, processing of the true waste work there. And uh, as I mentioned, we'll then begin going into record closure. Um, we also got some additional funding for D&D uh, &D of some access facilities at the Idaho National Lab. So at Portsmouth, um, we got an additional 60 million and that um, replaced the need to do the, the barter there that we um, had done in the past. We um, basically turned uranium over to the contractor, they sell the uranium and then do work for us. So this meant we didn't have to do the barter. Next slide, uh, Los Alamos, it was 28 million, which allows us to um, move forward a little more rapidly at the cleanup work at, at uh, Los Alamos. Um, again, that's most of it's getting the true waste processed and offsite and then um, continue working on the chromium uh, plume there. At Lawrence Livermore, which is an NSA site, we had an additional 25 million to um, remove some of the excess facilities. And as I mentioned, we have a P280 pool type reactor. This allows us to do additional work on removing some of the facilities around that. In West Valley, a $14 million increase and um, allowed us to be, do more of the deactivation work ready to take the main plant down. Moab, 10 million increase, supported additional two additional trains, so that gives us up to four trains per week, which doubles the amount of mill handlings and shortens the amount of time by half. Um, e -Tech, the $3 million uh, additional funding allows us to do demolition of the remaining facilities there. Uh, Brookhaven, we had uh, additional funding, it was $2 million in 18, but another uh, $10 million in um, 19, which allows to take down the high flux beam reactor stack, which was one of the um, last remaining EM scope up there at the Brookhaven National Lab. And then we had um, some reductions um, from our request, which Savannah River was 105 million below our request level, and that impacts how rapidly we can get the salt and stone disposal units ready. And and uh, so we're tracking that schedule closely to make sure that it, it doesn't impact uh, um, our ability to ramp up SWPF. Um, minor redu reduction in program direction, and then. If you look at our excess facilities, because that request was substantially higher in prior years, but they funded that, uh, it, um, it looks like a reduction. Uh, they just didn't give us additional money in um, as much money in 19. But with that excess facility work, because most of it is you know, at Y12 and at Lawrence Livermore, it takes us time to get mobilized there. It's basically you know, starting up new work, new contracts. And the last piece was the Uranium Thorium, which is a reimbursement program for our um, for companies that did work for the uh, AEC or, or DOE in the past. So, any questions? Did you have a follow-up, Dennis? Yes, I've, uh, I was wondering uh, how important it is uh, and what kind of a change it is from the past way of funding uh, to. Uh, put in funds for a completion of a job versus just nickel and diming it along to keep it uh, rolling. Uh, is that a change in the budgeting process uh, for uh, EM or is it uh, something that uh, uh, has been going on all the time I just you know, haven't been aware of? So I think I understand your question basically is if we if we can show 
that the, that the work will be done mm -hmm. with a, a certain amount of funding is that more um, appealing I guess in the, in the budget process so that does seem to be the case when you look at the excess facilities mm -hmm. where um, you know we're getting funding to cover you know demolition of the of the complete facility up front which is good for EM because it's you know we're accepting a facility from another program mm -hmm. but we know we have you know we don't have a future liability that we have to pick up so I think it's been helpful in those cases but you know for some of our really big facilities we just it's too heavy of a lift you know yep. to get that that funding mm -hmm. okay. all in advance yep appreciate that but I think whenever whenever we can talk to a completion it makes it appealing you know like I think like with Oak Ridge knowing that ETTP is within the next you know you know hopefully next budget cycle or two you know exactly it's very appealing mm -hmm. sure. did you have a, a follow-up to that Stan or a different line of questions um, well, it has to do with the budgeting process. Okay. Yeah. Let's, 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 um, I'm just, just making sure you weren't oh. following on to death. Okay, no, no, so. no, that's all right. All right, so, um, in front of me. Gil, we have, uh, about five minutes before we need to break. No problem. <clears throat> Thank you for this. This is very helpful. Um, everybody saw their sites pretty much even or positive we've heard me say this at the last two all chairs meetings so I'm happy for everybody else but then we get to the total reduction the bottom line and this is why Savannah River gets upset um, the cab does I'm not gonna speak for on behalf of DOE if you can go back to slide three Susan you were asking about the plus up thing and you know you don't really get all the money you request and things like that So the exciting thing on this slide for me, if we go down to the very bottom line, total EM, and forget about the first line, FY 2018 enacted, that's great, but FY 2019 um, request, we go down to the bottom, request is 6.6, .6, then we go to 2019 enacted, we're at 7.175, that's very exciting. What excites me for every, all the other sites, if you look at your request, um, starting out with Carlsbad at 403, got 403. We go down, Idaho, request 359, got 443. Los Alamos, 192, got 220. Nevada, asked 60, got 60, wonderful. Oak Ridge, 409, got 646, great. Um, Richland, we asked for 747, we got 937. River Protection, we asked for 1439, got 1573. If we go through all these, everybody got what they asked for or more, except that Savannah River line. And we can put lipstick on a pig over and over again and say it's great, but we requested 1656 to get our mission done. And I understand it's a political process, and we did not get what we asked for. Not even we didn't get plussed up. We didn't get anything. We got one five five one. Now, are we complaining about that? I am. Not the entire entire site. So when we go over these numbers, hopefully, you know, I've been trying to explain it to our board. This is our front. This is the frustration the Savannah River Site Citizens Advisory Board has, yeah. because we see these numbers. And hey, we're not mad. We want the e we want EM across the complex to work, but. The overriding thing that I've been trying to say, and Doug and I've been talking about it, is we want everyone to understand all the stuff that we do that may not be something that your sites do, that we're doing stuff around, around, you know, around the complex, and we're not getting funded properly. Now, are we mad at DOE? Are we mad at, you know, the Hill? We're frustrated. So when you when you're asking about plus ups and you're not, you know, and we're not getting enough money to fulfill the mission, yeah, we're not getting enough money to fulfill the mission. So this is what I mean, this is what I mean with these slides that Steve's brought with him. This is the best way that we've been, I mean, that for my, my purpose, that we, we can show, show everybody around this table. And I appreciate, you know, Oak Ridge, and I mean, you guys have come and said, what can we do to support? Mm -hmm. um, 
but this is the frustration that Savannah River has. Thanks. All right, we have about, yes, okay. Just, I think we're ready for public comment. We'll take public comment. All right, let's, let's hold your questions for one second, um, and we'll, we'll get right back to you, uh, Stan and Max. All right, so are there members of the audience that would like to participate in the public comment period at this time? All right, I just want to remind everybody, if you'd like to submit anything in writing that is available. All right, I see none. Are you good? All right, so Stan? Max, Frank, we have about 15 minutes before we. Anyone from online? Anyone from online? Uh, there are some comments online and, and they will be submitted into the record. Hmm. So, good deal, good deal. Thank you. All right, Stan? <coughs> well, <coughs> having spent 35 years in Washington, my, my tolerance for ambiguity is perhaps greater than those of other people. Um, so I, I kind of have an idea about the budget process that comes out of the White House. But my question is that there does seem to be a mismatch between the rhetoric that is coming out of DOE about completion, 10-year strategic plans, um, completion mindset, saving money for the, in the long term, the plus-ups, with the exception of Savannah River, that the rest of us got for 2019 and the request for 2020. So how, does the, how, do we, how do we hold these two contradictory thoughts in our mind at once? That is, we want to speed up the cleanup, according to under, uh, Assistant Secretary White. On the other hand, we're going back to old numbers that that sort of maintain this the uh, previous status quo so if you could I know this is a difficult question for you for you all sitting at the front of the table and I, I feel for you having been in your place at one time so but I would like to put that question on the table so so I think that uh, the strategies that, that Ann has kind of put on the table you know, are ones that help us to more effectively utilize the dollars that we we get to execute in the program. So I, I hear your concern about we could request more. You, you heard Shelley and Susan, the you know the um, the quote unquote uh, compliance budget for Hanford is about a billion dollars more than what was requested. You know, and so in the, the departmental scheme with, and you're familiar, caps and all kinds of things uh, that are part, you have to make tough decisions and, and then, but yet you demonstrate how you can best utilize dollars if they become available to your program. So uh, we have to work within the constraints that we have to, does it mean that we don't advocate for it, advocate for our position, but there are decisions that, you know, trade-offs that are made department-wide. So we are in a defense account. So the, the trade-offs that have been in our account, about the majority of our budget, are, are decisions that are made also for, to deal with the, the defense risks facing the country also. And so we're trying to balance off the, those kind of outside risks and, and posturing the, the country to be able to defend from those kind of risks with regard to making progress with environmental cleanup from the historic kind of problems that were created. And so it is, it is tough to make the decisions. Um, with that said, we do believe that these initiatives that Ann has put in place are, are a great way to try to more effectively use the dollars that we have available to us to address risks and the problems at sites. If I may just add, yeah. we would like to use Ann White's strategic vision to help you get the dollars that you want, that, you th that would be needed. So I think we all ought to keep in mind that uh, the Assistant Secretary has a set of goals that she'd like to achieve and 
through our action, we, we can try to help get her there. Thanks, Dan. Max? Well, you said to speak up as a new member. <laughs> And so my background is the Vice President of Finance Administration. So a couple of weeks ago, I, I got peppered with a ton of questions on tuition and fees. Those, those discussions every year are just, it's a, it's a slide deck like yours, lots of data. But here's one piece that from coming from this side, I'm glad I, you're on that side and I'm on this side to get to ask the <laughs> questions. So in no way do my, my hopefully my, my questions or comments uh, insult the integrity of your process but as an outsider point of view when you uh, have an important slide deck like this and you don't get in on our packet that's that's the first part when you talk about transparency if you want transparency we can talk about the numbers but it should have been in our packet we shouldn't have to wait for it later that's the first piece if I was to go to a public meeting and I was to show up a slide deck like that and say we'll get it to you later to, I need police support to get out of the building. With that said, when we talked about priorities, and you say we, who's making the we, and I know it's staff, and I know it's the, the presidential budget, and I'm familiar with how that works, but from the transparency standpoint, of all these different initiatives that you talked that had more money, who were the drivers behind the scenes, and maybe you can talk about it, maybe you can't talk about it, the drivers that actually elevated a project through their whole list that actually got funded. And what was that process they used? Was it a risk analysis that you're talking about? Was it a, is it a, a political process? From us as an outsider, I look at these budgets and I went on your website and I got your the budget that you talked about. It had a lot more granularity in it. But I really wanted to know is who behind the scenes is actually, is it our local, our local DOE folks that we need to continue to put pressure to say go to Washington go to go to you guys and continue to to badger badger till you get more money or is it uh, is there is it a political process that's beyond our control because as a cab member when I go back to Las Vegas I mean go back to New Mexico and we're talking about yeah we're happy to get new monies and I understand Gil's position yeah they don't get new money but from their perspective what did what did New Mexico do to get a little bit maybe 40 million dollars more than what another site and I don't really know how that process works I'm getting recorded twice <laughs> so maybe you can answer that and then the, the secondary question I have is uh, is there a way to get additional dollars for infrastructure I'm not talking about about st stuff I'm talking about roads power um, the unsexy part of of operating a, a, a building because every every site that I've been to has an has a growing deferred maintenance and I have it on my campus I have it in whether it's in the state of New Mexico and it's that deferred maintenance so we just continue to kick the can down kick the can down kick the can down until it's a crisis then we plug in more money to fix that one issue and I think from good stewards of public dollars I think we need to have something different outside of this regular cleanup mission that basically goes to the infrastructure. So thank you. Thank you for your presentation also. Sure. Two easy so, questions for you. So I apologize that you didn't get the slides because it was <laughs> me not getting them to Dave on time <laughs> to get them printed. He would have brought them out and you would have had them in the book. So, um, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Make sure we get them next time. We'll get them ahead of time. Um, but your first question, it's kind of all of the above, you know, it's, it's, so part of it is, you know, the, the, the federal staff has to put together a compelling case and they have to be managing the program well so that, you know, it appears to be that the money's gonna be used well and, and, and I think that's, and then they submit a request, we champion that request. It may not be fully supported within, you know, within the administration, but, um, there's, you know, the uh, congressional staffers and, and Adam DeMella from the Senate Energy and Water talked about this at our, um, at our intergovernmental stakeholder meeting, so I think it's okay to, to say people can come talk to them, and they do. So people go and, and talk to the, the uh, you know, to the staffers and make their case for why they think 
things are more important. And then that might just prompt questions. So then when we go over and present our budget, they might ask us, well, what about this or what about that? So they're very, very well versed on the program and what their stakeholders want and, and what needs to be done. So they'll, they'll ask those questions and then they're also competing for resources, right? Mm -hmm. So they do the best they can to try to get them, you know, the funding in the right place. So it's kind of a political. It's, it's, so that makes it political, right? But that, that part of it, but I'd say it's, it's kind of the full court press hitting, you know, from, from multiple different uh, ways. Sure. Then the infrastructure one, so we're, I, I agree with what you said. We've been looking at this for a while. We, um, we had, I was on a team that went and looked at infrastructure, and particularly actually how Hanford was doing it. So we had um, looked at, uh, their approach was to have a separate contractor that, do, in, that does sort of the infrastructure and site services, um, which the benefit of doing that was it allows you to put fee on those specific things. And when you don't have that in your contract, yeah. it tends to, the fee tends to be on, we'll just get the waste, yeah. get the buildings down, and you, you don't see any investment in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So it's part of how the department's managing it. Um, where we've, you know, uh, WIP, for instance, you know, I talked about having, uh, we, we had a separate budget line for infrastructure. So, you know, we could say, hey, this is just a near-term thing, but we have to replace yeah. the fire loop, the yeah. tr transformers, you know, because if we don't have power and fire water there, then yeah. we're not putting any waste in the ground, right? Yeah. So it's getting the visibility and getting it supported like that helps. So, um, but, you know, where there's infrastructure, we've, Admittedly, I think, in an effort to try to get the cleanup work done, we have let the infrastructure atrophy at sites. If you're going to close the site down, it doesn't matter. If it needed to be open another 20, 30 years to, to treat waste, then, it, then, it, then you really have to be sharp on what you're doing. I think that's one of the things we've seen Richland do, is go through and lay out. They have infrastructure plans for all their major systems for the life cycle of the site, so they know where they need to make additional <laughs> investments. And for every dollar of infrastructure money, they're gonna put it on the right thing. Thank you, and I'm not sure if um, who this goes to. Maybe in the future, I know it's the, the ink's giant on some of this stuff, but maybe in the future, the integrated priority list and where the dollars went on funding those on that list and match it so that when we go back to our public we can say, well, here's where um, chromium plume was on the list, and here's the dollars that were, that were on there. It's still on the list. It, it helps us because we're, they come to us for questions, and a lot of times we listen to a lot of technical presentations, and I can tell you in four years here, I, I know about it enough to, to get me in trouble to say something that I, that I think I know what it is, but I don't. And thank God for guys like Stan and the staff behind me that continue to keep me on track. But it's, it's that more, that transparency that you talk about. But there's no way that we know our cap has no teeth in telling you, you need to do this. It's a recommendation and I get it. And I understand there are people much smarter and paid a lot better than I am to make those tough decisions to say A or B. But it's better for the transparency standpoint to come back and say, this is what we funded. This is the reason why we funded. I don't think any of us can, can, can argue one site's more important than the other. It's all dangerous. And someone sooner or later is going to make that determination, the risk factor that says you're getting funded or you're not getting funded. But having that transparency from year to year, how projects are funded, it really helps from us to kind of go back and tell our constituents. And thank you for your presentation once again. Hmm. Thanks, Max. Appreciate it. Frank, we got just a couple minutes left. They're all yours. I'll be quick. And I do not, repeat, I do not want to upset our hosts, but I'm going to use their numbers just as a quick example mm -hmm. to illustrate my question. Savannah River in 18 had X, and Savannah River in 19 had about uh, $80 million more, uh, and their request in 20 is about, uh, well, over $90 million more, although everyone else in 20 is, well, not everyone, but many in 20 are less as far as requests are concerned. My question is, are we not playing the long game here and our numbers will vary? Sometimes we'll get more, sometimes we'll get less, and should we not be less upset about being 
lower on the totem pole, so to speak, as opposed to higher. It's just getting the job done. Nevada is small. We, uh, we ask for a little, we get little, and we were surprised as heck to see an extra million dollars in our 20. But again, I don't see where anyone is getting abused horridly by these numbers. Yeah, I'm not sure there's a The question was, aren't we playing the long game here <laughs> as far as congressional appropriations? Yes, yeah, so, um, and you're going to see, yeah, you, so you saw, you noted that there was a variation, right, from year to year, it, even in our request. Even though the request level is nominally around six and a half billion, you can see that we have been uh, ramping up in certain sites, and sometimes it's because we have a capital project or something, so there's a, there's a blip there, and then it goes, then the need goes down or we're completing work like AMWTP or things. So there would be a reason why we can shift things around. And I just don't want everybody to throw rocks at Savannah River next year if they get <laughs> the preponderance of the budget. Well, thanks for calling it a game. I appreciate that. Um, it's been a continual thing over the last six to seven years um, that, that we've seen this. Um, so it is a frustration point. I do understand the numbers. There's people on our board that feel the same way you do. Um, if, if quite honestly, uh, so I, I mean, I've heard this, I've heard this before, um, but with that being said, um, we are being responsible with our requests. Um, I've spoken with with our 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 lead, and we could request a lot more, and we don't. Um, but when you look at the the enacted 2018 and you take the um, enacted 2019, there is there is an up of $80 million. For $80 million with us, we're talking about percentages. I mean, I know $80 million is a lot, a lot of money. I mean, what's $80 million <laughs> among friends? But when we look at our budget of requests of 1.6, and it's $80 million, so we're talking about, what, 5%? And when we're seeing the entire EM budget go up over 12%, and we're not getting what we're, we're requesting in we're, we're operating H Cannon, which has been a conversation point here today, and we're operating it at minimum. Um, so there's a lot of things going on in Savannah River. We'll keep banging the drum, um, and hopefully not being disrespectful as your host. We'll keep banging, banging the drum until we see it differently. <laughs> I won't say what site I was at, um, but it was the first all chairs meeting I went to, and I brought this up, and I had, a, and we were, I asked Steve some, you know, relatively tough questions, and I respect him so much after that first meeting because he just straight up answered them. <laughs> And I, a member of the a member of the community that we were in, came up to me and said, "Congratulations, you had Strom Thurmond for 35 years. That is, so now you're getting your just due." <laughs> oh my! <laughs> yeah, and um, and I said, "Well, Strom's been passed away for almost 20 years now. When's that over?" <laughs> my goodness. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is it it, it it it's wearing old. It's a Van River. I understand where you're coming from, and it's a valid point, but this is wearing old. Thanks. Hey, thank and it you. is a political issue. <laughs> hey, thank you, guys. This, is a, this was a good discussion. I appreciate the questions. Steve, it's always good to have you here. Thank you. Always good. Thank you. Hey, let's take a, a quick break. But we're just a couple minutes long, so can we be back at um, 2.45? Let's be back at 2 4, and then we will do the most fun thing you will do all day. We'll look at recommendations. All right? So find some caffeine, some sugar.
<laughs> Heather, ma'am, we're going to start with the PDF of the recommendation James gave you. We're going to start with that, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, so. <laughs> Oh, look at Dave ascending back to the throne. <laughs> He's like, oh, <laughs> now the lightweights have gone <laughs> back in charge. Is that not what you said? That wasn't an exact quote. Not exact. Not an exact quote. It's a paraphrase. Hey, so um, as, as we're getting started, and it gets towards the end of the day, and, you know, get a little, little, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I am lucky enough to be, you know, gifted when I showed up with a, with a pair of socks when I showed up, right? And so yeah. typically one of these, somebody is giving me a, so socks today, and Don, I'm gonna need your help with this, Don Barger, have camels on them. Nice. And I said, Don, why do they, what day is it, Don? It's hump day. Thank you, Don, so <laughs> nice. So Don gave me camel socks for hump day. All right, we're going to start with the, uh, a, a quick review of this recommendation that you guys got right before lunch. Yeah. The uh, 2016 white paper to the new administration on who we are and what we do. Um, Dave, do you wanna yeah, I have us a, off? Yeah, I have a proposal. I don't, usually I like to let y'all do the, the proposing. But, but, um, we're in South Carolina and you said y'all. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Not, we're not in South Carolina. Oh, we're, <laughs> We're in Georgia. Georgia. It's even better. Georgia. <laughs> Georgia, with the J, right? <laughs> it depends on who you talk to. <laughs> so I, I was reading the, the, um, the overview of this, of this document, which has really the language that Eric was talking about, where it expresses you know, just how many people we represent and, and the diversity of communities we represent. And it's, it's really good. And then we, we go into sort of more detail on what our priorities are things like that. But my proposal was going to be, um, why don't we, we sort of uh, immortalize these three paragraphs in, in maybe every recommendation that, that the chairs do from now on. Either we can have it at the beginning or we can have it at, at the end. But that way it, it transcends administrations and it becomes a part of, you know, when they get this recommendation, they, they also remember who we are and who we represent. I like it. Yes. Yeah. At the end. At the end? Yeah. yeah. At the end. Okay. Piece of cake. There you go. Does that count as a recommendation? So do, we need to, do we need to vote on that? So moved. Or do you want I to? I don't think How about, how about sort of voting? We just, we, <laughs> as we get into recommendation one, we'll see if we want to add it. Okay. Perfect. That sounds good. All right, Heather. How hard is it to steal those three paragraphs and move? Is that something we're going to have to do overnight? What okay, three make paragraphs it sure. are you talking first three, about? The first three. Then you want to leave off the last line of the third paragraph. As we move towards the new administration, right. unless we're... Maybe. Maybe you put it in every... 2017. Just let them know you're willing to overthrow the third. We kind of want to take 2017. <laughs> <laughs> that last sentence needs to come out. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this recommendation, because we stole it offline, is in PDF. So, as we go through the next three draft recommendations, and the intent is to add these paragraphs to the end, we'll have to do this overnight as homework because it's, it's just gonna take some time editing and, and it'll get that to work. So just so everyone's aware, this, yeah. is, this is where we are. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, so under, yes. Sorry, I like that last sentence minus the early 2017. Yeah, let, let's just. I, I'd like to see I, us leave I, that I in. Mm -hmm. As we move forward. Or the EMSSAB. The EMSSAB. To start right there. That's As we I move think. forward, the MSCB welcomes the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I think that okay. makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Sure. All right. Sure. Now, again, we'll walk through these, and we'll, we'll, we'll bring back, hopefully, a clean copy of it tomorrow, of whatever we have forward, and we'll, we'll be able to adjust this language. Yeah. Does that sound good, Heather? Are you good? All right. We're going to go to recommendation one. Wait yeah. a minute. That being said, oh. are we going to send this one? Or just... Okay. Question. We had, we had talked about doing that. Is there... Do you want to explain why you think it might because be worth doing the whole packet? Yeah, I actually read the entire thing. Every one of these is still applicable. Well, well uh, WIP is not applicable. Well, it's, it says operational. Yeah, I, I, it says resume operations. 
It has resumed. It has. They have. Have they provided additional above ground storage and below ground repository? Have they provided that? No. Not yet. Well, that's the recommendation. You know. I, I, you know. I understand why you'd want to take off the reopening. I just hate to lose all of this detail because there's some really, really good stuff in here. Well, so I think. Stan, what are your thoughts? I mean, I think David's fundamental thought is. You know, we should not reissue this whole thing. That we should take, we should take the front few paragraphs and make sure that it's uh, associated with each of the recommendations in order to, in order to emphasize who we are. But if we reissue this same thing, um, it goes into a great deal of, of detail. That's um, okay. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of. Okay. Lily you, uh, that's that's okay. two viewpoints. Does anyone else feel real strongly either way? I like Dave's idea. I, I, I don't discount that. I think there is also some really excellent historical information here that is always helpful. But I understand if we change it, then we'd have to go through the whole thing again, and we need to change some of it. And I get that. And I don't want to stop moving forward. I, I get that. Okay. All right. So we're good? Oh, yeah. All right. Sure. Probably a good idea to remember that recommendation, though, at some point in the future, mm -hmm. knowing that those core values mm -hmm. tend to stay the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Recommendation number one EM's review of cleanup milestones. Okay. Susan, Dennis? Which one of you wants to kick this off? Susan? Okay, sure. I read the GAO report and. Um, I think that in many cases we do get the kind of information that we're hopeful for, but I don't understand, as long as I've been doing this, what really determines an interim milestone? What determines a major milestone? Is it a dollar amount? Is it risk? And I think it would be helpful mm -hmm. to define how you call something a major, a minor, an interim, whatever those terms are, I think it would be really helpful, and especially to the public. I do speak, I go speak on behalf of the HAB several times, and they'll ask me questions like that, and I, I think it would be really helpful. Milestones and money drive the work. And for me, and I tried to keep it really short, just consistently define them, what kind they are, and because it's kind of confusing for some local boards what a major or minor is. And if it's different at each of the sites, then say that. And maybe they use different criteria to define it. I, I don't know whether they do or don't. Um, and it helps, it helps and certainly in my discussions and I think with other board members, when they discuss with the public, they'll say, you say the word milestone and it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. So. And it should be easily accessible online. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure if our milestone information is online other than in our tri-party agreement document and the actual milestone section of it, parts of it have been changed more than two or 300 times. So if there could be one, just one place to go to to say here's the milestones and, and have it updated regularly and have it accessible easily, I think it would be great. And that was really the intent. There's a lot more in the report. I don't think a lot of that, I think they do a good job trying to explain it, the milestones and where we are mm -hmm. on the milestones at each of our cab meetings. But defining what is a major, what is a minor, those things ought to be available to the public and with a clear understanding, everybody understands. So that was the genesis of this. I sent it to Dennis mm -hmm. and uh, he didn't have any changes. Nope. And I certainly don't object to changes, whatever mm -hmm. you all think is, whether it should go forward or not. Perfect. Susan, Dennis, thank you for uh, taking the lead on this and, and authoring. We appreciate that. All right, we're going to open it up to discussion from the board. What do you guys think? Is this uh, something you're interested in uh, pursuing? Mm -hmm. Bill, you look like you're reaching for the mic there, sir. Uh, I was going to ask Dave is this uh, something different at every site the uh, every because if I recall 
I have seen something like this before in much more detail than I wanted to look at in, you know, in Paducah site. Of course, there were others would be different. So, I mean, it's it's different every site, but it, it, all the sites do have milestones and reporting mm -hmm. requirements and, and things like that. So it, it does trans transcend uh, just one site. So it kind of makes it appropriate for the chairs to take it up. Stan? Wow, well, that was loud. I apologize. <clears throat> I'm sorry? I said it was loud. Are there calling on you? Sorry. Um, well, I think it's entirely consistent. The, the, the recommendation is entirely, cons is entirely consistent with, uh, with what DOE agreed to with respect to the GAO report. Um, and I think emphasizing uh, our support for those recommendations and for DOE's willingness to step up to that to those challenges I think is a good thing so um, I mean I certainly would uh, support a recommendation along these lines I, I guess I would kind of reach back into the recommendations of the GEO report perhaps and um, make sure that our language and I haven't been able to compare them here as I sit is is uh, reinforcing we don't want to say anything different from what the GAO right. says and what DOE has agreed to so uh, uh, perhaps we can overnight you know make sure that we are reinforcing and not contradicting and that we are helping in, okay. in any way possible to reinforce that message just a just a quick crosswalk Dennis quick questions for Steve um, part of the discussion that we had uh, after lunch was uh, that uh, Oak Ridge and I can't remember the other site had rolling milestones uh, and is that different than what we normally uh, look at as like a perk chart or um, I'm trying to understand the definitions that's all that's a problem mm -hmm. so, yeah um, my understanding of the rolling milestone, the concept is you set up, you know, say three years of milestones and mm -hmm. in the budget year, um, that one's, you know, that one's held to that date because you got the funding for it. But the out year is dep it's funding dependent. So if, if, uh, if you don't get the money, then th they get renegotiated. Okay. So that would be different than what we're talking about here for long-term milestones that uh, <coughs> tied to tri-party agreements? Uh, I think tri-party allows for renegotiation. And they do have, they, okay. yeah, they've yeah. renegotiated several times. Okay, right. I'm just making sure that we're clear on that. Right. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. We don't call them real milestones. <coughs> we call them delays. Yeah. All right, we got a uh, Gil. Hey, what if we hear from Doug first and we'll come back to you, Gil. Sure. Okay. Doug, what do you think, sir? Gil's no, no, up for yeah, we want to hear from you, sir. Well, good afternoon. Doug Howard, SRS Cap. Uh, the question I have is, on these milestones, are you talking um, something that all of us and all the cabs would be able to look at and see what others are doing at other sites? Absolutely. Now, would this also be something that could be formatted so that it would be generic? to everyone as far as how it's, you know, formatted and made up. So it would be, you know, like your site wouldn't have a different format in using in setting up those milestones as opposed to what we would be doing and how we would uh, list ours. Well, since we're, we're, we would be providing this to Ann White, I would assume that if they determine they want to do that, then it would be consistent formatting I would and I'm assuming that but I don't know they certainly there's a lot of autonomy at each of the sites but I couldn't tell you I could tell okay. she would direct it I that would be the process I suspect mm -hmm. it, would, it would seem to make sense and I, and I think yeah. I understand what Doug's saying that if it was a a, a single document or a right. set of documents that looked the right. same so you could yeah. manage and see it however that looks for best that okay. I'm assuming that's Let's right. put words right. in your mouth. But. Yeah. And would we be looking at this as like a report card somewhat? Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah. I'm sorry. A report card of your, you know, uh, how your, your, your site is doing? 
they used to do that. We actually used to see report cards, and they would have a, it would either be in red or orange or green if it was on, uh, you know, I would imagine that would be developed if they determine they want to do this. So I would, I would assume, Doug, that having this metric of, of sorry, this document, it would easily be used as a, probably an informal metric to, to, to give you a baseline as to, right. to where you stand and where this is going, both yeah. as a site and as a, as a, um, as a complex wide, as a department mission. And so, while not intentionally, I don't think Susan was looking at this as a grade card, but anytime you provide data on a, on a basis like that, it, it's easy to use it as a, where do we stand? Kind of creating those yardsticks, I think is what uh, Stan had referenced. Is that what you were hoping to see? Yeah. Or? Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. A little more ammunition for our budget battles. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Nice, Doug. All right, let's catch Gil. Um, thanks for the work. I mean, doing a recommendation is not fun. It's not easy, um, and especially doing it across country. So the great job. Um, is going back to what uh, Mark was talking about this morning and the new approach to contracting and using end state. Does that, or is this apply to that? Because I, you know they were talking about task, and so if we're we're talking about milestones. So are we getting into semantics with milestones, or is, are we talking about tasks too? Well, I actually was talking to Steve about that, trying trying to figure that out, and. It's, it's my understanding there in this contract, there will still be milestones. There will be a baseline. There will be those, they will use those kinds of terms. It, it, that is. So Steve, are those terms almost interchangeable or no? My, what, milestones and? Tasks. Tasks? No. Well, I think that my understanding, the, so the way we'll do the, the task orders is that we'll have, you know, based on the funding and what the priorities are, you know, for that, year or that you know that next window will negotiate that particular task but it could be ahead of the milestones you know the, the, the you know the negotiated milestones i guess okay and so susan just i mean so I, the tax is the task is the work scope the right. milestone is so we're looking at the milestones as a as a citizens advisory board from wherever we're at this, I'm trying yeah. to correct yeah. me if I'm thinking wrong. So this is our way of knowing if DOE is managing their contractor through the milestone. Meeting the milestone. Uh, right. If they're not meeting the milestone, most I mean so. And we should know the rest. Why? Sometimes it's a weather event. Sometimes it's, you know, it's not okay. an accusatory kind of. No, no, no. I get. It. I just metric. wanted to understand yes. the thought process. Thank right. you. That's good. Good. Job. Shelley, did you have something to add? Well, I was thinking about this. It seems like I think we need to be clear on what we're asking for. It sounds like maybe we're still maybe not. It is. Maybe we're still not clear. I hate to see us be too prescriptive because I think that with other recommendations that are coming in from the GAO and also from the National Academies of Sciences, um, it's an opportunity for DOE to look at all of these recommendations inclusively and see if there isn't some way to address all of them in a comprehensive way that makes sense. That's open and transparent for all of us. So um, I guess I don't feel like we need to get too wrapped around the axle of a prescriptive, uh, this is how we think you should implement it. But I think we should be clear on what we're asking for. So. That, that's always helpful. Always helpful. Stan? Well, only, Gil, that we're not going to try to define milestones for them. No. Yeah, I was just trying, yeah, we're was just, just trying to ask them to standardize. I mean, when the military builds ships and planes and submarines, they're different objects, but generally speaking, they use comparable terms to describe benchmarks along the path to completion. And so that's what we're asking for. Yeah. And that would help, frankly, that would help us. The way it would help us is to be able to say what are the, quote, major milestones along the path to completion of your tasks and how has it changed. So I think it would, you know, help us to uh, inform our publics about what, what, uh, what is involved in the cleanup we had a situation. Board, we had a board member on the Savannah River site cap who used to ask the specific question of the site manager every single meeting after his and when it came to his questions be either the previous site manager after, I mean, he asked a lot of questions but it was all, he asked about milestones every single meeting 
And uh, it seems like you're doing that. That would eliminate that need for that question. And Steve, I, I would like to ask you, as someone who may look at this, uh, certainly a representative from the department at your level, w was this clear to you what we were hoping for? I didn't get that. Would you? Okay. <laughs> and, I think you're putting them on the spot. Yeah. There's two <laughs> short recommendations. One of the things we do at the Hanford Advisory Board is when, when we develop advice or recommendations, one of the questions that we ask the recipient of this advice or recommendation is, is it clear to you what we're asking for? Does it make sense? That's our, in essence, our customer. So we're, and so I'm kind of posing that question. Is it clear? I have a question for you. Sure, go ahead. Me? Uh, yes, Susan. Oh, me, okay. Uh, give, give Steve a chance. Yeah. You did not include the third recommendation. I from did the not. the GAO. GAO, can you, can you tell us why? A while since I've read this, I'm trying. I thought it was too prescriptive, and I. So if I any, really if, like to keep things at a higher policy level. If anyone's curious, uh, just the, if you didn't look, the GAO report is in tab seven, along with the other report okay. that uh, on, on recommendation number number two is is, at, is right after that. Yeah, let me look at it, then I can. Such an easy reading. <laughs> I, I wrote this some time ago, so I'm. I apologize. I don't. Know that right offhand. So, Steve, while she's looking at that, have you had a chance to process? Yes. So, um, it's a I know when I've had to explain a lot of things to GAO, and sometimes um, they they see things as confusing because the field's doing it one way and headquarters is doing it mm -hmm. a subset of that information, right? So the way I looked at the milestones was that um, you know they asked so they ask us for a set of milestones for Hanford. So we go to our database; these are the ones we're tracking, and we pull it out. Then they go out to Hanford and they ask the site to produce, and they have. They produce the ones that they're, and they may have a lot more because they're looking at ones in more detail than we are. So that's where you know the GAO will say, well, "Look, you're you're doing it differently. You're both managing the same site. How can it be different?" Well, you know, I'm interested in, in budget and compliance milestones. They go and you know, other people, you know, our compliance folks are monitoring. Them. There are reasons why we might be tracking them in databases differently, but. What you're saying is it's confusing to you all. So if it's confusing, you know, and you understand your sites, then that makes sense. So yeah, I, I don't see any problem with the, the way you're written. And there's one on the back. Yeah. Is, is there an easy answer for you to this, Steve? Is this something that can be pulled together, and or is this a is this a big a big haul to? Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, so the statusing of milestones so we do um, we have a system where milestones are tracked and um, the sites do enter in there mm -hmm. to explain mm -hmm. them so it's at least a report that we generate now. Mm -hmm. Dave could do it for you he could run it so I'll give him iPads and access <laughs> I don't want to be nice <laughs> Oh, you might send that to Alyssa. All right. Um, okay. Where are we? Thoughts on this? Susan, did you take a look at that third recommendation? Yeah, you need a second? I'm trying to figure out where the third one is. Looking at the wrong page. Page 20. Say it again. 20. Thank page you. 20. Trying to find it. So just for the, uh, the sake of everyone, Stan, what's the third recommendation on that? Well, <clears throat> The Assistant Secretary of uh, DOE EM should comply with the requirements in the National Defense Authorization Act by reporting annually to Congress on the status of its cleanup milestones and including a complete list of cleanup milestones for all <laughs> sites required by the Act. The annual report should include for each milestone the original date along with the currently negotiated date. Okay. So that was the uh, that's EM why I didn't because that reaches a level to Congress and that's not our purview to tell them what to do with Congress. It is 
what concerns our boards and the public. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why I didn't put that in there. Okay. Does anyone have uh, any issues or concerns with this recommendation as it stands now? Yeah, Victoria, good to hear from you. <laughs> um, I, while I totally agree that we need to have the definitions of what major, minor, and interim milestones are, um, and it surprises me that that isn't formally defined already, uh, when I've looked at the Paducah sites, our projected timeline, I know that that's constantly changing. And so I assume that that is the type of milestones we're talking about, is the projected timeline. So my only concern is really the last sentence of two, that it has been proven that constantly delaying the cleanup and pushing the milestones out has led to increases, which to me is if we don't have the budget, then we have to renegotiate. And so I don't know how much of that is the sites missing the milestones versus renegotiating the milestones. And I also don't want to go to the public in Paducah and be like, okay, well, we were going to be done by 2020 and then 2030 and then 2040 and then 2050. Because, I mean, that's kind of depressing. And we, we all know that, but to the public, it's, it looks like, you know, things aren't getting done. And I just, I, that, that sentence concerns me just a little bit. And I understand that. And it, that really wasn't part of the GAO report. That, that was really just probably more So I think, we, I think we might. <laughs> and it probably, it, it, you know, I, it really, it can be, it can come out. I, I get that. It, it's something that we all know. You're exactly right. The longer you delay something, the more you have to take care of it and the more it's going to cost when you do it. And, and I get that. And it. It really was sort of ancillary to this, and I kind of threw it in there, and um, I think it probably could come out, and hey. the advice would be just as effective. Hey, hey Susan, bef before we take that step, we, we might want to take a second and, and make sure everyone understands the difference between your okay. the baseline and a like regulatorily agreed upon milestone, where the the regulators and DOE have said, we will accomplish this by this set date, or there's a penalty. And DOE has spent a great deal of effort and time over the last few years trying to get milestones off the books, right? So some of the sites, I think, don't have any milestones. I'm not sure Paducah has a milestone, a, a regulatory agreed okay. upon milestone. Okay. They have a baseline, but I don't know if we have anything that if we don't get a building down or groundwater treated that there's a a defined penalty so this doesn't necessarily affect all the other sites now we have baselines and targets well and but it's a little a little different the terminology on this and I think defining it and having mm -hmm. a clear definition of right. this is a milestone versus this is a projected timeline yeah having that definition is really going to help everything else down the road yeah. And that, that's a big deal because not only will you guys have that question, folks in your community who aren't as engaged right. as you guys will have those same questions. Yeah. And it's, that's the reality of where we are. So just wanted to clarify that. Dave? Oh, um, I just wanted to introduce, I introduced her earlier, but this is Linda Satora. So Linda is, um, directs my office, which is the intergovernmental and advisory board office, but also directs the compliance office, which is um, the, the office that does milestone uh, tr tracking. So uh, Linda's here if you have questions okay. as we go forward, um, I ask her to come up. So before I call on Steve, Linda, was there anything we've said so far that's been out of line or off base or anything you want to add to correct? So I do apologize. I was pulled out in the hall for just a few moments and I missed some of the conversation, but we do have a tracking system where we track in what we call enforceable milestones, and those are, are milestones that come out of some sort of regulatory agreement, as Susan was saying. And um, I do not know every agreement. Of course, there's, there are hundreds of pages every site, so I couldn't tell you specifically which milestones, if we have any, are in the Paducah, if there's a Paducah agreement with a similar situation, but I could find out within minutes for you. Um, <laughs> what's that? 
Oh, okay. I'll look into it. Oh, okay. Well, I could, I could find out in just a few moments. I could send a, an email and, and my staff would respond very quickly. Um, we do have a electronic database system where we track all the mi enforceable milestones. And the only thing that, the only issue right now is that not, you're right, not all sites were playing from the same um, scorecard. In other words, they, when they put something in that's an enforceable milestone, some of them were actually not enforceable yet because they're in the rolling milestone situation. Although we track them all as enforceable milestones, even those out in the future, we're planning on modifying that database a little bit to make everybody, all the enforceable milestones that are enforceable today have one set of coding and then all those that will be enforceable in the future will be coded a little bit differently and we're also going, part of the, com the complaint was that not everybody was using the exact same definition and so we are going to, we're moving there. In fact, I've assembled a national team. Somebody from every site is on a call every other week and we are hammering out the exact definition we're gonna use for milestones and then we're gonna send out a guidance to all the sites and say you all have to follow this because we all agreed that this is the way to go. And so, in fact, yesterday was our call, and tomorrow meeting was, when I get back, I'm meeting with staff to go over all the comments we had, put out a new option, and so, I mean, so we're actually working it on, on a very systematic method. And then the next step was tracking what changes over time, when if we miss a milestone, or if we delay a milestone, either due to funding or uh, something, we, you know, we go and dig it, thinking something's gonna be low level waste, we dig it up and discover it's true, and so that changes everything, right? So we, so some, then we have to go back to the regulator and say, oops, this was not what we thought it was. We have to f figure out a new set of milestones for this, because it's different. Um, then we are going to track in that database what changed, why it changed, and what the new milestone is, and what, result of any renegotiations were. Because that's what the GAO complained about was, not only does not everybody track these the same way, but then they also don't track any changes that occur over time. And so we may not be able to go back 30 years, or I think the first milestone, or first, first phase were 28 years ago, 29 years ago. We may not be able to go back in time and fill in all the details, but we, from this moment on, will you know, once we get this in place, and we will have something in place by the end of the calendar year. It was surprising to me how hard it was going to be to get everybody on the same page. I thought, oh, you just ah, said, oh, but we'll get it. But it turns out that it, it does take a significant effort to change, to turn this ship a little bit, you know. So it's, we're, but I'm trying to do it so that everybody is on board together and nobody's surprised. And will this database be available? Publicly? It isn't typically, but what we, because it, there's a lot of information in the database that gets down into Steve's budget stuff that we, right. that we're not able to share. But what we will be doing is at least on a quarterly basis, mm -hmm. I originally said monthly and folks, some of the sites actually have contracts in place where the contractors only have to update the database quarterly and yeah. some update it monthly. And so Perhaps that's the next contract for that site, but well, at least quarterly, we're putting out a scorecard. And one of the things I already heard today, which I wrote down, and I already sent an email to staff and said, hey, consider this, is differentiating between work getting done or important technical reports versus a monthly status update that we have to provide so that you, perhaps what we can do on our quarterly scorecard is to have one set of graphs of how folks have done on accomplishing their tasks that are actual towards progress, and then also do it for the administrative, because those are actually just as important oh, yeah. to us to tr make sure folks are on board and we all know what's going on. But so we're, we're working towards that. I already sent an email from just from this morning's conversation to tell folks, add this into the list of stuff we need to, to do, and there's no reason why we can't report that on a quarterly basis. <coughs> And if that's helpful. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I think just as a point of reference, and we'll, we'll catch Victoria and, and Steve and, and Shelley. Um, Susan, correct me, but I think when we used to see the report cards, part of the problems they went, and the reason they went away is 
the grade on the report card became more important than the the reason behind why right. things might lag, which I think was the board's concern is, and is it a funding issue or weather yeah, issue? Right. And people got very concerned with, Thank you for bringing that I up. That be was minus. another part of my, uh, my plans on modifying the scorecard yeah. was to have also for those delayed milestones, what was the cause? Right. So is it a technical issue? And, and one of the things I'm doing on my, uh, my um, every other week call is so this week was the definition of milestones. Next week is the definitions of why things get delayed. And so they're actually going to have a drop-down menu so they don't have to invent the words, which is where we ran into problems in the past. Right. And so if they have a drop-down menu that gives them 10 choices, now we have to come up with the words and the 10 choices. So, okay. But that's, my, that's our next call in two weeks is to go over what are your options for why it's delayed, right. and then we were going to track that. And again, it's not all going to happen tomorrow. Right. It's, you know, but it's, it's the intent. And I actually called... So Steve knows that I'm not just doing this randomly. I did call the IPABs, the, the database people, and verified that this is possible. Because I was like, we could just make all these great recommendations, and then we go to the database people, and they go, oh, we can't do that. But I already called them, and I said, here are my thoughts. Is it possible? And they said, yep, no problem. We can make that happen. I don't know how much it's going to cost Steve to make those changes. But <laughs> you had an opportunity to, is there anything in here that is negative Looking at the record, there's two short recommendations that doesn't support what you're doing. It sounds like it's... So uh, as, as long as recommendation number two doesn't mean that you get into... I mean, you should be able from your site be able to ask them, how are you doing in your milestones? We may not necessarily have that available on a national basis other than in a rolled up version. So that says and roll, right rolled up okay. We might roll it up, but we don't. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I can't commit that everybody okay. can see everybody's milestones. Oh, okay. But your sites on there, I'm not, and I used to go to cab meetings all the time when I worked with Savannah River site closely. Oh, I never made it to a cab meeting, but <laughs> I did Hanford closely. Um, more fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I used to, oh, I used to. Um, speak at the, the cab meetings on a regular basis. And I did know on those um, meetings that they would have a report out from their regulatory compliance group, how we did this quarter, how we did whatever. You know, So that was a regular part of their cab meetings. And so I would assume that that would, would continue, that we wouldn't change anything there. Uh, but, um, but I don't see why uh, it wouldn't be. If your cab, your SSAB does not do that, perhaps you can ask your uh, DOE folks for those regular briefings on how they're doing on meeting milestones. Victoria, did you have a follow-up to this? Yeah. Um, I just generally wanted to make sure that, you know, the CAB's position is that we agree with the results of the GAO findings and that we're trying to support you in this work, Excellent. that we're not doing anything that hinders that, but, you know, that we're pushing forward, that this is something we believe in and we want it to continue. Cause I know sometimes projects get started and, oh, yeah. you know, things well, get in the, the way. Well, the thing about GAO is um, because they report through Congress or to Congress, and, and Steve, if I get this wrong, correct me, um, we don't typically let those drop because if we piss off Congress, they may not fund <laughs> our stuff. So we want to make sure that we um, respond as well as we can to, it's, it's not like a project that we self-initiated. This is being hammered from above. I'm sure that sounded great online. I was wondering if we had a seven <laughs> second delay. How does this work? Can we, can we drop that? How's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What'd she say back? That means mean somebody's got to go over that so she doesn't look so bad. So somebody's got to, you got to top it. All right. Okay. So, Funny. Stan, you look like you were going to add something to this. Well, I, I'd like to kind of move move this. Forward. All right, hang on one second before we do that. We, okay. we definitely want to do that. We, we've got Steve and, and Shelley. All right. Let's make, and then we'll. Sure. I'll come right back to you. Okay. Okay. Um, getting back to number one recommendation. Yes. You're talking about consistently defined major milestones, minor, interim, and now I'm hearing enforceable, and then there was rolling this. This, you know, there's six million different names with each one of them has a slightly different definition but can be interchangeable. 
So my question is on this. I know from past work and stuff from that came out of Project Management, Project Management Institute for program project management workbooks or you know paper trails that go with it. They have a dictionary, common terminology. Um, to me, I don't want to add extra work, but I'm thinking you're going to have to add some extra work and better define like what milestones are and tasks and how do they comprise and make milestones. I think you really need to get something a little more detailed than three milestones because definitions because that's just not going to do it. Yes, we actually are. We have. Um, at Right now, I think we have six terms that we will be defining and providing as guidance to all sites so that we follow the same method. And if a site, if based on the way their compliance agreement is organized, it might be they have a different term, but they're going to have to report back to us and we have to add it to the data dictionary and maybe put a parentheses for their site. But we are going to have standardized terms for major, minor, interim, which are the same thing as planning, which are the same thing as future rolling enforceable milestones. Those are all the same word. Um, administrative versus, and I can't remember the other term that we were, one person said on the ground. I said, nah, sometimes it's not digging dirt. Sometimes it's taking down a building. Sometimes it's completing a significant technical report. So we have to come up with that. I think it's a progress. But anyway, we have a series of, of items that we're adding to the data dictionary that all sites will have to use consistently. Is that helpful? Yeah, that's okay. what I was looking for. Excellent. OK, Steve, okay. since he is already working that, do we need to make any changes to the current recommendation to include those or since it's already being done are we good and you didn't say hi to your wife yes <laughs> hi wife <laughs> well done. um the i would think that's a terminology besides the major milestones is, is you, i would think you need to say the data dictionary just so it is all inclusive in that because this to me still is very too lean. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. If you put it consistently defined, uh, provide a data dictionary on milestone ter terminology or something mm -hmm. like that. Is, that. is that an easy fix, Susan? Great. Think we can do that? Of course. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Shelly, what do you have, ma'am? I want your words. Well, though. I'm thinking about the project manager meetings at Hanford, and I'm thinking about how they document TPA milestones and meeting them and interim. And I would suggest utilizing those quarterly reports, they go into the administrative record, they list the milestones that are on the books, they list the work uh, broken out into uh, scopes of work. Don't reinvent the wheel. And so that's, I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking about the ability for all of us to access the administrative record and actually have that information. Those reports come out every three months. They're usually a month behind in terms of the data that's in them because of right. where Takes they are. Um, but I think that's a better spring, might be a good, better springboard. So we haven't started working on how we're going to display the data. Mm -hmm. However, every site does track those things. They track them in a slightly different way. And so we're going to try to do best of the best, best practices, figure out across the complex, across the country, since I have somebody, at least one person, sometimes two or three person people from every site on my calls, I'm going to just gather all that and then we'll make a recommendation based on best practices across the complex. I have to admit, I, th I li really like the Hanford way they do it, <coughs> but I'm also very comfortable with that because I did Hanford for a while. Uh, Savannah River does a good job. I really haven't, I have to admit, I haven't seen what the other sites do because I haven't delved into it yet. That'll be my next step. Good deal. Stan? Um, yeah, in the interest of, 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 I mean, we still have a half day tomorrow. To, Absolutely. To look at it. I guess I would like to suggest uh, that we, um, we delegate to Susan wordsmithing responsibilities for tomorrow's meeting. 
I mean, I have some words I would suggest to her. Great. Uh, and and so I would suggest that we we give her the task, give Susan the task of coming up with the final draft for tomorrow's meeting, based on the discussion today and and other suggestions that we might give her on the side. Okay. Is everybody within reason? Carlton, what are we thinking, sir? Well, I was listening and wanting to know if once the definition handbook is printed up, will it also be given to the GAO so they'll know our terminology so that when they come to look at us, they're understanding from where we're understanding. So we'll all be on the same page. So I guess that was my question. Did, did you catch that question by chance, Lise? I, I did. Can you? Yeah, that we would be responding okay. to the AO. We're good. The question was that once we have the data definition or data dictionary, will that be shared with GAO to make sure that we're talking apples to apples? Yeah, actually, we're committing to, to providing GAO the dictionary and all that stuff by the end of September. Okay. So that way, Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for your input. All right. So, cool. is everyone comfortable with um, allowing Susan to take this? And if anybody, who's willing to help her? Because we're not going to. Stan's willing, and Dennis, I think you're you're looped in. Mm -hmm. So you guys can sure. we'll quick crosswalk to make sure we're good with the GAO terminology and it doesn't go sideways. We'll we'll make sure that we do the adjustment on that recommendation one to make sure that it, it shows the right the right terminology and list of potential uh, definitions for the data dictionary. And then we'll add the, uh, the three the, paragraphs. That last sentence yep. regarding the delaying, take that Perfect. out, it really isn't. Okay. It shouldn't be here. <laughs> and then we'll have a, uh, hopefully a clean product for you to look at in the morning. Does that sound good? Oh yeah, this won't take long. Perfect. And someone here is gonna type this. I don't yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll help you. Okay. Sure. Great. All right, well done guys, good job. All right, you guys ready? Big deep breath. <laughs> Recommendation number two. Here goes, Shelly. Okay, so um, number two, uh, recommendation number two came out of our last phone call, uh, Chair's phone call for this meeting, uh, with the understanding that the uh, National Academies of Sciences put out a report that's an independent assessment of the science and technology for the Department of Energy's uh, EM cleanup program. And uh, the intent was, uh, you know, how are we going to calibrate success and near-term or out-year cleanup of the radioactive materials that are within their, their scope. So I went ahead and read, the, I signed up, and uh, Dennis did also, and uh, uh, read the document, it's, I think it was around 140 pages, and put out uh, six uh, bullets of recommendations that seem to fit well with the types of uh, scopes of work that we've weighed in and as chairs and vice chairs and, and as cabs. And um, so I don't know if we want to take a minute to take refresh before sure. we talk through it. Do people want to read it in its entirety? It's not much. Uh, once again, the um, the basis of the recommendation is inside tab number seven towards the back. It, the actual report was 400 and something pages, yeah. so we just printed the executive summary out. Yeah, and I didn't read all 400. <laughs> I, uh, that's for certain. I'm alive. Slacker. Yeah, thank you. Man. Thank you. Susan read all 14 pages of her report. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, I signed up for the wrong one. That's it. That's why we like you, Shelley. You're a team player. There we go. All right. Thoughts on this draft recommendation while everybody's finalizing their quick cursory glance through. Hey, by the way, thank you for doing that. If we, for yeah, reading and drafting, that, the, giving us the starting point is always the toughest part. And so to, so to do that. All right, this one's a little bigger, a few more points. So we're going to take our time and kind of go through it. Um, initial thoughts, anybody have 
serious heartburn on the direction this is going. Stan? Well, um, I certainly thought that uh, the uh, NAS's recommendations were extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if uh, there was a process that DOE responded to those recommendations and what they thought of them. I was interested to learn yesterday that, um, that the uh, Savannah River National Lab is the only one that does uh, exclusively, uh, excuse me, that's devoted to cleanup technology. That, that seemed, I, I had a, I was wondering about that. I'm not sure that that's entirely true, but considering that L Los Alamos is one of the premier labs and uh, L Lanel is another premier lab and they, do they not do some cleanup technology? So, um, I mean, I certainly think that the idea of a more, more effort in the technological area is appropriate, but just reading the, reading the recommendation seems to address a, a, a number of other questions that are not, you know, related to the, the S&T recommendations of the report, um, deal with public dialogues, um, and uh, changes uh, to a uh, changes that would lead to a successful S and T program. I I'm not sure that how they relate to the report itself and uh, how we would interpret that. So uh, certainly the fundamental recommendation in one I certainly would could support. Okay. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, these are points that were uh, addressed within the report and recommendations that were made to DOE. And um, I think uh, one of the things that, in fact, we even talked about it, Sue talked about it on the phone, is uh, um, that there needs to be a database that is formal and, and flexible and available to the public. And uh, so that we can we can follow um, the progress, and I and that it needs to be developed. And it's something that has not been a strong suit for for DOE EM, and that's what they said. And so actually, all of these recommendations um, came, except for six, which is not, uh, came from uh, within the scope of that report. In my mind to my reading it. And I wrote these, rec you know, I wrote these recommendations, uh, Dennis signed off on them, mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> so I take responsibility for that. Um, the ARPA-E recommendation is using um, them as a um, independent management uh, arena for, you know, building this transparency that's directly out of the recommendations from the National Academies of Science. Frank? Do we have a current definition of cross-cutting? Excuse me? Do we have a current definition? An industry accepted definition of cross-cutting? I, I don't know. Um, to, to, to what are you, um, what, what, why are you asking? What, what, what well, it's used in the document more than once. Okay. So just trying to define what that means for the purpose of make sure we you all understand where it's going or? I mean, let's say cross-site remediation needs because really what I'm talking about there are uh, remediation needs that are uh, that are needed at more multiple sites it's a cross-cutting issue between sites so you, and that's what it's no. about I, do you, I you prefer like a complex is there a better a better phrase for that complex wide something along those or is that what you're my only concern is that this might not be easily understood by okay. every reader that's fair that's fair we can we can look to, f to find the right word that's okay Steve yes in order um, uh, asking to have a little more detail again inclusive um, in recommendation number one uh, 
under item A, identif identify uh, blah, 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 to reduction of radioactive waste materials. The other issue is within that that goes hand in hand is just general hazmat, hazardous materials mm -hmm. as well. So I think that would need to be put in there too to be inclusive so it is not left off and you have yet another pile to deal with, you know. It's a matter of addressing Recra and Circla issues. Okay. Chopi, what do you think? I haven't heard from you in a little while. Well, on the background, it states that this is from the National Academies of Sciences, this assessment. Uh, my concern is uh, recommendation six. Okay. If that's nowhere in that recommendation or that letter, or uh, not the recommendation, that mm -hmm. uh, document, is this the place to put that? Okay. If it if it doesn't, if it isn't any part of it and it's uh, added on there, that looks like we're saying that that was in the document, or maybe it wasn't in the document. Okay. Right. So that's not a not an issue of supporting the idea of that particular recommendation. It's that this might not be the right place. This for may it. not be the place for it. Okay. Are you are you comfortable with that, Shelley? Oh, absolutely. And I said I did. It was not part it's of it. It's good. A, okay. You know, we could make it a standalone in a letter. Um, you know, pretty easily, if the group wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. What What about some of the other folks? Anybody else thoughts on this? Good point. Dennis. Yes. Uh, can you? Uh, you had a meeting uh, explaining the Phoenix. Uh, database uh, recently to get an update and that's the reason that you're putting it as background in here uh, even though that uh, uh, that wasn't part of the, necessarily the, uh, the National Academy of Science. But that's exactly you know. right. No, the National Academies of Science recommended that there be a database bill that was accessible mm -hmm. and so it made me start wondering or thinking about you know what's out there now that is being utilized that might not be able to be incorporated into a programmatic uh, picture. Uh, and rather than having to reinvent the wheel, which is also one of the concerns um, within that report. And so uh, we ended up having a, an introduction to the Phoenix system at Hanford. And it's a very data rich system. And so this is nothing more than a suggestion to maybe look at something like that and then go into you know, thinking about what would it what would it take to uh, develop um, some kind of platform that we could use. Uh, I believe the last time we were in Hanford, that was one of the meeting sessions. Is that there was a an introduction to the chairs at that time of the Phoenix system and kind it's of a been a while, kind of walk through. It has been a walkthrough. I forgot and, and, about that. that and I'm not sure who all here is familiar with it and and what they. If everyone, to still Frank's word, cross cutting across the board here, and if everyone knows what that means. This bullet isn't to say use it. This bullet is to say, you know, very very clearly says okay. something like that. You know, is that not would that not be a good idea? Yeah, so. here's a prototype and, and yeah. take a hard look at it. So. All right. Other thoughts. Is it is this recommendation close enough where we could do a little cleanup on it and get it to a spot where? All boards would be okay taking it back and, and having a serious discussion on it? Yeah. Stan, what do you think? Well, I, I, uh, I, Shelley, the only thing we have to work on here from on the, you, you've had access clearly to a lot more of the material than I have, and I'm looking at the summary. That's all I really have in front of me. And uh, I'm just looking at the three, or actually four, recommendations mm -hmm. that are here. Two of them are not in, in, the, uh, in the recommendation, and several the recommendations that I see are not in the summary. So there's a mismatch, frankly, in my view, between the recommendation and the summary, that's the information that's available to me. So um, I, I feel that... Uh, you know, we need to kind of look at the summary and, and uh, 
or at least look at the report itself and make sure that they are compatible with one another, that they are consistent and, and uh, reflect, you know, what the, uh, the, the uh, National Academy has actually reported. A question, uh, question that I sent, and I'm, I'm not trying to play devil, I'm, I'm just yeah. making sure that we, we get a clear understanding here. Are you wanting, I, I'm sure you're not wanting us to just echo their recommendations. Um, I don't see any problem with that. Frankly. Okay, okay. I mean, they, these guys, if they put work into writing 500 pages based on detailed analysis, and uh, frankly, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to second guess their, their, their results. Fair statement. If we are going to say that our recommendation draws on their, their, their uh, study, then we should somehow be consistent with their study. Maybe not. Maybe well, not. then that's okay. a different recommendation. No, draw. if you draw on something, <coughs> it, you use it to inform something that you are creating as well. Right. And as far as some of the things are consistent as well, but there may be other values that we bring to play that the NAS doesn't. And it's certainly appropriate to add those in as long as they're not contradictory. We're, and I, I get that point. You don't want to be contradictory, but if, if it's an addition to or a values-based activity or action we would like to see happen, I don't see that they have to match one for one. They can pay people to tell them anything else they want to hear, and that's not what they have us for. That's good. Um, no, Stan, uh, so um, is, the, is the initial verbiage in this recommendation um, creating the, the sense, do we need to look at that to make sure it, that we're showing a different uh, set of recommendations coming out of the same data set from what they had? Or I'm just trying to find some way to, to, to jive what, what, where, I, where I sense you're going and, and where she has ended up is, is try to find some overlap here. So is there... Um, I don't know. I, I understand what you're saying, but is there a way to, to, to alter the, the input so it doesn't sound like this is the findings of the National Academy of Science and then we show and a, a different set of findings? Right. 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 Does that make sense? We are not parodying. Right. We right. use it to inform. Sure. And I, I'm like just asking. Thing. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Ask my kids. Well, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. Something to think about. You're putting me on the spot. I don't mean to. Do not mean to. <laughs> Do my, Susan, did you have anything to add while we think about well, this? Sand, did, it, did that make sense to you, what I said? We, it, it was part well, of why we looked into this. And because we also have information available to us, there used to be this site exchange of science and technology, and, and they would do best practices, and they kind of discontinued that. So we have some history with that, the new application. And using this as a springboard rather than we're not parroting what they say. As, you know, I, I understand. As I say, I, I think these are smart guys and, and they, know the, they, they know about science and technology management and, and, and uh, you know, I think there should be more uh, integration of technolo technology uh, uh, solutions across the uh, uh, across the complex. I, I have questions myself about why certain solutions are used in one place and not in another place. Um, so I would have no problem, you know, looking at these S&T recommendations and uh, incorporating them into a recommendation, but they're uh, one of our recommendations. But I, I do have problems, for example, with two and three a public dialogue on technology focused on cleanup. Well, we try to do outreach all the time. Are we suggesting separate S&T uh, dialogues? Uh, shouldn't that be integrated into our overall dialogue with the public? Um, fundamental changes for creating a successful S&T program. I, un I honestly don't know what that means. So, I, Frank, uh, I, I don't think that this recommendation is yet in a, in a, in a uh, fashion that uh, I think is useful to DOE at the moment. Okay. Um, I think reinforcing 
In the same way as we reinforce the GAO's recommendations for consistent usage of terminology and approaches uh, in order to help us, help us do our jobs and help us understand what they're up to, I think a uniform approach, a more u a centralized and um, uh, complex-wide approach to technology would also uh, help. So I, I think in each of these cases, I was interested that you all took took the, the opportunity to use the, the GAO and the, and, the, and the Academy of Sciences to promote our goals. And, and I think that's, that's proper. I, I frankly, I, don't, I think we're okay on the GAO recommendation, but I don't think we're there, you're there yet on this okay. recommendation. So, and, and I, think that's, I think you said that really well, um, using their, their findings and recommendations to promote our goals. And, and so that's where I was hoping we could get with this and figure out well, we, and if we need to spend a little time in a breakout session and handful of folks take a swing at that, I, the recommendations are better when we work on them as a group collectively yeah. and they, they come together. And so that's, I, I appreciate your, your sentiment and sorry it took us a little bit to dig it out. But that's, that that's, Doug, what are you thinking, man? Uh, Doug Howard, SRS Cap. Well, that's what I was kind of thinking. I mean, uh, we're here as a, uh, as a council to figure out, I think, uh, Shelly and Dennis, you all chose what you felt was appropriate Absolutely. for us to go forward with with sure. a recommendation. Now, um, if that's not what we want to do as a as a uh, as a group, then uh, I guess either we start all over again and figure out what it is we want to pick and choose from those two reports, or go with what you know what Shelly and Dennis came up with. So what if what if we at this point? kind of take this one back to the drawing board for the evening and, and see if we can get a um, maybe a larger group than, than the three we had before to kind of talk through this and make sure we find the right message because I think if we can get you know four or five maybe even six of you to make sure that your, your thoughts are heard and that we understand it, it makes it easier in the morning. Shelly, are you okay with that? Maybe do it no, in a small I, group instead of... I'm thinking about timelines and I don't think this is uh, perishable. So, and the idea of this was just to get something down on paper that we could then build on. And it sounds like you want to build on it. It sounds like there are, there's potentially other things that other people want to say, which is the point. Yeah. So I'm not feeling beat up uh, at all. And, uh, and I think that that's, and if it's something that people want to go forward with, um, then let's do that. Okay. Are there a few folks who let's are willing to it. work on this this evening? Looking at you, Doug. Are you willing to help? I'm going to volunteer Stan because he's. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. Great that. idea. Who, who else is willing to, to stick around and? Yeah, we we got to right. five, right? Carlton. Okay, good. Great. We got to Shelby, five, right? You want to help? Not you. Mm. Not you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. So um, maybe we can. Uh, what what if we do that? And, and what we'll do is we've got one more recommendation to walk through. We'll, we'll do it and see where we stand with that. And if we can, we will break early so these groups can start sooner and spend some time this afternoon so we can get to where we need to this evening. Does that make sense? Is that Because yep. I'd rather you have this time working, come back in the morning and, and, and show us where you got. Is that? And if it's not perishable, if we need to drop back and pump, we'll, we'll do it in Sun Valley, right? <laughs> okay. What do you think time-wise? Are we, you know, and Steve, you too. If you would weigh in, do you think that this is something that we need to get on and respond to right now? Uh, would that be better than waiting till Sun Valley? And if Sun Valley is the target, then we have some time. No, I think we should aim for now. I mean, the report, okay. the other report's already out, so mm -hmm. the longer we wait, the less our recommendation would matter. Okay. Hey, James, do we have the capability to work on multiple recommendations at the same time? Well, it might be. Always away. That's no, but we're going to figure that out. I like it, so we, we will help. Okay, so um, Susan? I have some happy news. Steve Rosenbaum was talking about he got this phone call at the last meeting. I got a phone call, well, it, a text from my granddaughter. She passed her final security clearance. She's joining the Peace Corps, and she leaves for Mongolia at the end of the month. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> and it's her dream. <laughs> and I'm really a proud grandma. That's outstanding. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's 
Outstanding. Well, speaking of Steve Rosebaum, let's slide over to recommendation number three and see how we want to handle that. Steve, say hi to your wife and kick us off. Okay. <laughs> Hello again, wife. I hope you're watching the live stream. <laughs> And I'm, Still. Not, and I'm not recording you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically this thing has come together. It's taken about three years to get it to this point. And I know certainly there's more work to it. Um, it kind of got a basic format with, uh, I've been working with Gerard, I guess. He's turned out, correct? Yeah, Gerard turned out from New Mexico. And so it didn't get a lot in here, but this whole thing is scalable for each site. That they can put their cab observation of current infrastructure needs that they've observed independent of the infrastructure project list, the IPL that was talked about before. So right now it is Nevada heavy, but it's not meant to be Nevada heavy. This is meant to be inclusive of all all sites. So, going on that, what do you guys think of it so far? All right, sorry about that. Um, all right, thoughts on this recommendation? All right, Gil, get us going, buddy. Steve, um, did. Did you work, is this just yours? Did you just write this up yourself? Um, I wrote it up myself and I sent it off to Gerard when he was on uh, the New Mexico cab to review it and suggestions. And I basically got a, uh, you go for it. A go for it? Okay. So um, what, I mean, so that, that's always a question I've had about all these, all the recommendations. Do we bring them, who brings, do, does my, does like my cab have to, put something and I bring it or do, how do we do that what's the process I mean it's a good question we don't have a process yet <laughs> <laughs> we've been operating for about 20 years and maybe we should have a process but no we haven't we don't have any sort of standard for how recommendations are brought brought forth but um, I'm meeting with the staff tomorrow afternoon and we're going to talk about uh, updating our policies and procedures manual and in there we would put something about chairs recommendations uh, but right now, no. Yeah, it's just because this one struck me a little differently because the other ones were authored by. This one's proposed by. Right. And that just, I was wondering what that meant. Well, I, I kind of want to respond to that because those, the chairs, the vice chairs that were on the call, when we, we talk about recommendations on the call, and uh, Shelly and I both, these were something that we suggested, the GAO reports, and then we asked on the phone call with all the chairs and vice chairs who were on the call. Do you think this is worth drafting? Would you like, do you think we should bring something forward? And everybody, who, who, nobody objected on the call. Okay. Uh, so I, I agree that that's kind of what the formal process has been. It's, is, or informal, is on the call that we have and have our discussions, ensure that all the chairs think, yeah, that's something we're talking about and, and draft it up. And then they ask, Dave asks for volunteers and we, uh, you know, we volunteered, and uh, we always ask for somebody, anybody uh, else, to help us with it, and we'll bring it forward and talk about it. So it isn't, you know, I just didn't. Okay, I want to do this and bring it. It was through a discussion with the other chairs and vice chairs. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's my question. Okay. And I guess occasionally uh, during the morning discussion on the first day, an idea subject will pop up and someone will say that would be a good idea. And we'll assign some folks. And you have to be careful when you bring up good ideas. You get <laughs> stuck right in a recommendation. All right, so <laughs> thoughts on this recommendation. Where are we? Is this something we want to pursue? So my question um, on number one, um, Establish a program of remediation of issues on transportation routes with U.S. Department of Transportation, state and local government agencies along the rad waste corridors, resulting in a list of improvements, budget source, time frame, and implementation. So we're talking about things outside of our fences. We're talking both inside and outside. 
And again, the reason why it was expanded to this is the current political climate is supporting you know, collaboration between the agencies. I mean, you just heard it on the news yesterday, two trillion for infrastructure. Congress and the White House has been talking about it. So there's this push toward infrastructure and it's just the timing is right to do this and to look at, you know, opening up a large program and then just incrementally working on it, having it filled through. DOE would not necessarily be a you know be the prime mo motivator on it, but you have all these agencies here, and they all can dig in. I mean, further down, if you look at the appendix, there's so many grants out there for the uh, for the um, other uh, potential participants in the state, local and public private you know private partnerships as well. That a lot of this stuff can be done without necessarily having to reinvent the budget. Okay. Yep, that's where I was, you know, going with this and is, is infrastructure is failing. We have, we have an administration that's acknowledged it and this could be a pathway to do it in a collaborative uh, nature. Susan? I'm, I'm really struggling with this. I don't disagree. I want you to know I don't disagree, but I'm struggling that as a board that it advises or provides recommendations to the environmental management portion of the Department of Energy um, to gather in the Department of Agriculture, Health and Human Services, and all of this other, um, I, I guess I'm not sure, number one, that it's appropriate for us to do this, to dictate to them or suggest that kind of thing. And if DOE isn't going to be the prime actor, or DOE EM, I, you know, I can understand inside each site, that I get that, but I don't know, this seems out of our purview. Okay. Um, basically, these infrastructure failures are um, uh, actions that is affected by DOEEM. So the effect is there from it. So I think it is within our purview to ask about it and talk about it. Yeah. DFO, do you want to weigh in? Is this, is this recommendation, are, are we good? Are we within our, our scope and our purview? Or not to put you on the spot, but guess what? No, I, I don't know. I, I mean, Steve has obviously put a lot of work and effort into, into this. And oh, yes, and I agree. Um, There's no question of that. Uh, on that point, if I may, yeah, so, yeah, so, some, sometimes because you make a recommendation, we don't have any teeth, and that's within the internal operations and bureaucracies within the federal government. But if you have a recommendation from an outside external entity telling you it's not only that we're dealing with a cleanup on our sites, but every time that you, when you move from, from whatever site, from Nevada to wherever you're taking it to WIP, you're now impacting, you're interconnecting the sites by that transportation. So I think it does have some relevance and it gives, gives the DOE the ability to go back to Department of Transportation and the other states and say, this is something that we need to work together to solve. One of those, one of those vehicles has an accident, there probably may not be any, any um, hazardous material that'll, that'll leak out, but the perception of it is that, oh my goodness, we have something in, mm -hmm. and you cause more of a panic because uh, we're not making the recommendation. So I support this recommendation, even though it may be outside the realm, but it just gives you more teeth more uh, leverage to go back to the other agencies, wherever it may be, Homeland Securities, wherever the, the dollars are for, uh, you can get them and say, we think this is important. And I talked to uh, one of my colleagues here and I said, I'm all about the money. I'm here to get the money to help you guys get the money so that we can start addressing these difficult issues. Because if we don't raise them, because we think it may be outside of our preview, then are we negotiating against ourselves? 
and I don't negotiate against myself. I'm going to ask if someone says, no, you can't. Well, at least you know that it's important to us as members of the CAB and who we rep represent. Thank you. Thanks, Max. All right. Dennis, what do you think? Just in addition to that, uh, we were discussing uh, uh, replacing our uh, waste site. And one of the options was to truck everything out west or train it all, all out west. And uh, I had discussions with uh, some of the senior people from our, uh, not only uh, on our site, but also from uh, the subcontractors. And uh, he actually lives in Elk Ridge. And in his assessment, he said, I can really support NIMBY. Uh, I don't want that waste uh, site in my backyard. He said, but from a practical standpoint, anything I can't imagine uh, seeing a, a train accident or a truck accident with our stuff on board across the United States. So that's the same, it's along the same lines that you're talking about. Yeah. The infrastructure is critical. That'd be his worst nightmare. Uh, is anything from our site getting knocked off the rails or, or spilled uh, as a truck uh, somewhere. So the infrastructure is critical. So conceptually what I'm hearing is that hmm. it, Con, uh, this is a concept no one really has an issue with. It's just a matter of have we put it in a context that fits within the scope and purview that not only this group is comfortable with, but your boards will be comfortable with and supporting. Is that I, accurate? I don't know if that's accurate on my okay, I, I struggle with I struggle with this as well. Um, Man, maybe not. I don't know if that's accurate because with the logic that I'm hearing coming out, um, Yes, EM material does travel up and down our interstates and our highways, but so do Walmart trucks. Are we gonna are we gonna ask Walmart to point, pay more money or gas and oil industry? They travel a lot during these along these same corridors. Are we going to tax them at a different rate because they use these roads more? Um, Department of Transportation, and I guess you, if people can correct me if I'm wrong, is a department that upholds our roads. Um, we have a budget, let's just say, of six and a half billion dollars for EM. Um, if we go out and, I mean, I understand the teeth comment, and we go out and make a recommendation, quite honestly, I think it's out of our purview, and we make that recommendation, we're opening, we are making a, it could, could it be conceived that we're making a recommendation, hey, take some of our money to up improve the infrastructure? And that's the last thing I want to see happen. I want, I mean, so that's the question I have is, are we talking about inside the fence or outside the fence? If it's inside the fence, by all means, that's our responsibility. I totally get that. But when we get outside the fence, DOE, environmental management, just because we deal with some really nasty stuff, doesn't mean we're responsible for everything, you know, all the transportation wherever we go. So I'm really... I mean, I hear you. I understand infrastructure is important. I understand the roadways are important. I'd hate to see it on, 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 an accident, rail or otherwise. Um, but I just, I, I don't see how a recommendation from us on this really fits into the scope of environmental management. Well, let me, let me respond to that. So instead of, I'm with you on the same, if it's taken away from the dollars that we're using for cleanup, I'm 100% with you. But as I started the meeting, I started peppering the, even Steve this, this today. Why can't we go for other dollars outside our cleanup to address this? The, there's a difference if Walmart has a vehicle that wrecks. Walmart's on the hook for it. When it's uh, if it's one of the trucks that's carrying one of the hazardous waste, waste, then it's the the federal government that's going to have to step up, and it's going to be your state and all, all the backlash that goes with it within the, the press saying, how come you guys didn't secure it? All the questions, how come you didn't request it? Yes, I, I get it, and it's outside. So my, I would say maybe we need to augment it to say, to seek additional dollars to improve the, the, the transportation between whenever there's transportation from one side to maybe like Quip or something. And it doesn't tax against your operating dollars to do your cleanup, but it's, again, I'm here for the money. If we can make a p compelling case to get additional billions of dollars to be put in transportation and other areas to work on those roadways, it's a win-win for everyone. 
Yeah. Thanks, um, Max. But what, what I think Gil is saying, and, and, and we have to be careful, is this is what the kind of the charter of this board is, which is we recommend things to specifically to EM, not even to, 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 to DOE at large, but EM specifically. Um, and so if we start to branch beyond that, if we say things like, oh, well, we don't like what EPA is doing at our sites and we're going to recommend something to the EPA, then we've gone beyond what is the scope of the, of the board. So even though that might be useful, actually, to recommend something to EPA that they, that they do with things a certain way at our sites, it still just goes beyond the scope of the board. And so this, this group has a very limited and specific mission. And so I think that's, that's the only problem that we run up against. So let me, let me um, you asked me to, to go <laughs> ahead. So no, here, here's the thing, because you've already put a, uh, uh, um, a fence around your, the discussion saying that's within our preview, but someone set up the rules. So it gets it, it goes to you guys, you, you run it up the channel and stuff like that. I'm, I'm with Gil. We should not impact the regular cleanup dollars. I'm 100%. If it, if it goes against that, then I'm opposed to it. But if it's there to give you teeth, it, people say, well, it's, it's not really within their preview. But it, it's a public recommendation for you to do what you think you need to do within the bureaucracies of, of, you, of your agencies. You can say, hey, we've got, a, we've got a recommendation from this citizen advisory. We're going to put it in a, a letter to Department of Transportation or even the EPA. There's something within the EPA. There's, there's nothing wrong with a communication between the EM to any other organization. Here's something that's coming from people who are outside our normal bureaucratic process. So we're not, we don't have any teeth to say, you have to do this. It is a recommendation, just like we get recommendations all the time. We're just hoping that from your internal process that you, someone within your agency, types up a letter saying, here's a recommendation. Hopefully, you guys, you can use this to help garner funds that helps within the whole imp infrastructure improvement across the country. Hopefully, that makes sense. And I don't it, mean to be combative. It does, and, and logically, that does make sense. It's just from a, a, a practical standpoint for what the purpose of this 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 board is we don't generally don't do things like that but, but if you're at if I have like on my campus if I have public comment and someone says hey maybe you should think about um, this process and maybe improve it well maybe it wasn't their their point to make that that recommendation but I as a person who has responsibilities may take that comment and say maybe we should take a look at it yeah maybe it followed fell way outside the normal realm Right. But information, transparency, communication is still communication. And we should not shut ourselves down because it's outside the normal world what we've always done for 25 years. I hear what you're saying. Uh, I'm a guy outside the box. And any member of this, this, this board can individually write any letter that they want. Sure. But as a board, we do have to follow certain rules and guidelines. I get it. So is there is, is there, there a right way, and we're going to catch Victoria I, and Steve. Right Steve, can I respond real quick? Please, Steve. With that, you just heard earlier today, Mark Gilbertson, EM2, the second in charge of EM, says, yeah, we should reach out to Department of Transportation. He's on board with this thing. So my question is, this is all about collaboration. You know, this is high level at this point, and just pointing out a few specific things. I did it for Nevada and just some areas surrounding Nevada, covering the southern and northern has, you know, hazmat uh, routes that DOE uh, uses. So the point is with this, like I said, it's all about the collaboration, it's all about getting that high level. You know that high level discussion going and a lot of the details are going to come later this isn't going to happen overnight i mean this thing is probably you know years and years in the making till something comes out of it but it's got to start somewhere so is it and, and i know in the past um when we have hit this level of discussion on a recommendation typically the best way to get through it is to take everything a step higher right so we're even though it's a pretty high level recommendation, it feels like sometimes if you take a step back, it's easier for everyone to get around it or at least get to a point with it. So is it possible to, to slightly tweak this recommendation and just confirm that 
the state of the infrastructure currently could be a potential liability if it's not already a liability for the Department of Energy. And so in stating that, we realize there needs to be some action taken, even if it's, it's not EMs, but it's going to affect you and you know it, Department of Energy. Potential things you could look at might include things like this. So you make it a, a little softer recommendation, but the recommendation is actually we know the infrastructure is a liability and it's going to become an issue, not just internally, but, but outside our fences. And we want to make sure that there is some plan in place somewhere. Is that, think about that. And I've avoided Victoria for a long time, I'm sorry. Victoria? <laughs> I'll get you back later. Um, so my, my, I have two points. My first point is that I think it's starting to identify an important issue, which Eric just brought up. But I think right now, as it stands, it's very site-specific. Um, so I would say before moving on to actually doing it, we need to make it a little bit more generic where it applies to everybody. And then the second thing that I really kind of had a confusion on is, is there a pothole outside of my site or a bridge that a train leaving the site goes over and there's a problem? Are we asking DOE to fix it? Or are we going to DOE saying, hey, you have a little bit more power as an organization than we do individually, and we really want you to um, have an interagency cooperation with Department of Transportation and kind of throw a little weight behind what we're saying? Yes. Okay. That's number two. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I was getting at, but the first time I read it and I'm like oh my gosh we're asking DOE to fix the potholes and the trains and everything no that was never the intention okay. of because I just the way it was worded it went on and it just it wasn't clear exactly what the point was because there were so many supporting details that kind of lost right. the main message understanding I was just that I just used that as a placeholder with Nevada just some things that the board itself observed as opposed to the um, infrastructure project list that each site has. Um, you can pull this all out of the main one and call it the Nevada, some Nevada issues. Then you can have another one, Savannah issues, Paducah issues, New Mexico issues. Everything in there is where, you're, where things are identified as appendices or, you know, in that respect, I mean, how it is formatted, I'm not gonna lose sleep if it changes. I'm not gonna lose sleep with softening it up as what uh, our illustrious uh, facilitator has said either. It's a good word, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and I, and I, I said, this is just a very rough start working, working draft of it. So, so Victoria also raised a good issue, and as a rookie, both she and Max have done great. And we get to drop that tomorrow. You, yeah. you <laughs> hardcore veterans as of tomorrow. But uh, um, the, um, oftentimes, the, the recommendations that come out of this board lean on the shorter side as opposed to some of the, and I don't know if that's creating some of the, the concern on this, that is the, the level of detail that you lovingly put into this recommendation. Um, but often, I mean, it's not unusual for us to see like three quarters of a page recommendation with two paragraphs of background before you get to anywhere. Because for all the sites to be comfortable with it, you have to kind of step back a little bit. And so, Steve, I don't know if that's an option that we can we can shorten, soften. I don't know. I, I just want to see what Shelly. Our, our yeah? goal is just is to get something out there to get the conversation started. Okay. So how it gets out there, in what form, is, irre is irrelevant to me. Okay. Shelly? So I, what I don't know about the whole transportation issue is a lot. Um, <laughs> but I do know that the Western Governors have an as association that gets together, and one of their working groups is transportation. So there are a lot of discussions on transportation at the state levels. And I, and I, it would be, it might be, good to build a working group within these chairs, uh, our chairs here, or vice chairs, uh, to take a look at what's been said, what's being pro uh, proposed, and how we might succinctly weigh in. And, uh, 
and tie it to other efforts that are already ongoing. I don't know. Susan, what are you thinking? I think I really like your idea of elevating this, and I do think it could be within our purview if we provided one or two short recommendations with a little bit of background, because DOE is really concerned with liabilities now. Liabilities, how long it's going to take, and th to me that's the way to connect to transportation. And we could use a recommendation some, or develop something like um, the liabilities would, would increase if we are unable to move waste the way we need to. <laughs> so we would suggest that EM be the Department of Energy or government to government or however they do it, whatever the appropriate verbiage <laughs> is, have a work or establish a working relationship with the various local and state agencies to ensure the safe transportation. You know what I'm saying? That kind of high level, you know, and you could talk a little bit about road safety and that, you know, that, but ask them to work with the agencies, not us calling out agencies because they're different in every state and every organization. And But we could raise it, I think, to be appropriate and, and under our purview. Frank, I'm going to come right back to you. Gil, is that getting closer to something you could get behind or is uh -huh. it still? But I have a question. Well, how did DOE respond when, you're, when you guys put it through? They didn't really have a problem with it. Said so run it up through the board, you know, through the chairs, and see how it goes. Did um, did the Nevada site? Did you guys write this recommendation and, and turn it in? Yeah, the board saw it. They approved it. No, did you did you did your board put the recommendation to DOE through like we do at Savannah River? We write a recommendation and then we put it. We send it to DOE and we get a response. What was their response? Oh, no, this one here was went straight here to the chairs. It didn't have an individual recommendation for Nevada because it was a national issue that Nevada is interested in. Uh, I, I mean, I kind of have a problem with that. Um, because you're asking to start the conversation and put it out there, but y'all haven't done that. Your, your, in Nevada, your, your, your cab hasn't done that. I mean, I'm really not understanding because it's open, it's in our records, it's in our minutes, it's openly talked about. They know what's going on with it. This has been going on now for close to three years. Yeah, well, the, I mean, I, it's not personal or anything. It's just if I brought something, if Savannah Riverside brought something to this board, I would, I mean, we'd bring, we would take it locally and then we'd bring it to the all chairs meeting. And so, we're, uh, it, maybe that's just my thought process. I don't Within the last 60 days, this was approved by the Nevada Site-Specific Advisory Board mm -hmm. with input from our DOE reps for presentation to the National Board for consideration. So this was not done in a vacuum. This was done through our board and it was unanimously approved okay. to bring it forward okay. for your consideration or Rejection, right? Why? I mean, my question is why? Why did you? Why didn't it go through? Why didn't it go through your board? You just you just felt it was no, a no, national I, thing. No, no. I said it did go through our board, but you don't. I mean, the thing. I guess I'm hung up on the recommendation part. Um, so you did a recommendation did go into DOE from your board? Not to DOE Washington. It went through our local approval oh, process okay. with so our DOE rep. So your DO, your DOFO just, it, just make sure we're not talking across each other. Uh, so, like, has this been Kelly? You want to help? Yeah, thanks. I want to make sure that we're not getting sideways on something yeah. that's. Sure, um, I'm Kelly Snyder. I'm the DDFO for the Nevada Board. Cool. Um, this transportation topic has been routinely discussed by our board. Um, several years ago, the board made a local recommendation about improving roads um, within Nevada. We explained that that was something that was outside of DOE's purview, that we could not improve roads outside of our fence, essentially. 
um, the discussion was still something of interest from the board and so there was more discussion that uh, took place so rather than ask the local Nevada office to consider this recommendation they wanted to take it a step further and take it to the national Who's board they? our advisory board so just to give like the cliff notes of this the um, Steve drafted the recommendation gave it to the local board for consideration they supported it and they brought it here they have never presented this recommendation at the local level for DOE response so normally we get a recommendation from them and we respond back very official this one is just been held within the board completely and had discussion there we're aware of it we know that they're working on it we've read it we 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 know what's in it but this is not something that the local nevada board has responded to N local nevada right. office i'm ba sorry based on based on the fact that a previous recommendation earlier on you guys had said this needs to go farther up the chain and right because right. they were asking okay. us to look at things beyond nevada and that's not something okay. that we can do at the local level does that make sense gil at all us. okay does it help at least no. still doesn't educate. like it but. no yeah i don't not i mean not i mean i just because i mean steve you said it i mean it's pretty nevada heavy right now and it needs to be talked about and discussed um yeah i just it, it, to me it's just really pulling it's really pulling at this board to try to go outside the fences that's i mean i'm going back to that original point i mean what that's the reason i want to know how your doe responded Okay. because i wanted to hear what doe had to say about going outside the fence um because you know we do talk about infrastructure every site's talking about infrastructure um it i am and i appreciate what you said max what you said it's just it feels like we may be opening pandora's box and we could be in so the next thing you know I, I just are we going to make a recommendation that dod gets involved um and protect our shipments i mean i i, I don't know i just feel like we're really taking a large step out there going beyond our scope of what we do and that's the problem i have okay bill i'm sure you've got this all figured out and have a succinct answer <laughs> uh, i think part of the issue is uh as is noted this is sort of outside our normal avenue of addressing things and i'd maybe just like a clarification i'm sure i could look up in bylaws or whatever and find it out but dave you mentioned that well gosh we could all write individual letters, you know, as concerned citizens, but if I wrote a letter to uh, uh, Senator McConnell and said, hey, I'm Bill Murphy from Paducah, I'm concerned about the roads carrying hazardous waste in Nevada, I'm sure I'd get a real prompt response from him. <laughs> so is it even uh, within our purview to say that, you know, I have uh, some insights through my service on an advisory board or you know a citizen advisory board and how we might communicate with our congressional delegation i mean is that a fair thing to say or do we just say i'm a concerned citizen and i mean if you're <laughs> writing a letter what we generally ask you to do is don't you know don't misrepresent yourself as representing the advisory board yeah you know but if you want to list that as one of the things that you are because that that is what you are is a, a, a that's how it came to my attention board. or whatever yeah. right okay. no you could certainly put that in a letter but yeah we okay. asked you not to sort of imply that you're representing the board yeah. with your yeah. Yeah. request because i think you know we're all struggling with how do we get attention about this issue beyond you know the you know the em group or whatever because clearly it's a problem for somebody else other than just you know environmental management all right let's go uh max frank and victoria real quick so I, we're not making a, there's not a recommendation I saw that says allocate X amount of dollars, do this. It is a recommendation. And I understand, Gil, what you're saying you're outside the, the preview. It's gonna take one accident. It'll just take one accident. And then people are gonna start having the conversation. Because we're raising the issue, we don't have any authority. DOE and, and all others have the ability to make those decisions on where the dollars go. But I just don't, I just can't grasp around, it's just a recommendation. It's a recommendation, and I, I understand you saying, well, it's getting outside the realm. We're not telling an, an agency, this is what you have to do. 
we represent the citizens to say this is an issue we think you should take a look at it wherever it, it falls within the whole scope of the bureaucratic process of Washington and the DOE and every everything else I, I don't see where it's it's rubbing on anyone it's 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 giving, giving them a black eye I just I, to me this is just another recommendation I, I can see if you say you take some scopes out of it that it doesn't make it site specific like Nevada or New Mexico or anywhere else it really looks at saying this is an area that we think there should be some attention and soften it up like you, you talked about that that kind of puts a little bit more oomph behind it yeah write in a letter to 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 uh, members of Congress I see my Congress uh, my my delegation and remind them about the various issues but it's different when it comes from this group it has a lot more meaning because we represent all the different entities that are dealing with some making some recommendations on some very difficult problems or you know the the, the glass stuff that you're dealing with and all the, the numerous things the safety issues and all I mean yeah they're 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 crazy but once it leaves your site and it goes onto a public road that's going to be an extension of that responsibility rather DOE recognizes it today or something else tragic happens or it hits on a railway it doesn't really matter the implicit understanding of the public is that you should have had something if something happens if there's a spill or there's something and someone gets hurt the public is going to say you guys should have known you guys are dealing with this how come you didn't talk to the transportation how come you didn't do that and everyone's going to say well it wasn't in our preview and as a citizen outside representing that I think we have responsibility to say raise the flag you guys got to take a look at this this is some really ugly stuff that's traveling on the road the containers the drivers all that other stuff we can we can equip the driver with the training we can do all the other pieces but if the road has potholes and has erosion it has all the other pieces because it's not on someone else's radar and it becomes a problem and then we're all going to say well then we're going to get a bunch of recommendations from all everyone else and I, <coughs> I'm with Steve raise the flag make it neutral R bring awareness to it it's not going to hurt and I'm uh, I'm with you Gil if it takes away from your cleanup budget uh, there's no support for me I can tell you that if it's taken away from our cleanup it's not but there's other funds in the federal government that can start addressing this issue and should be addressing this issue and ours is just a recommendation from a collective bodies of people from across the country they're saying you should probably take a look at this this is probably important and that's why making the pitch lick make it less specific generic but raises the issue hopefully I convince you Chris I mean Gil <laughs> no no it's, it's good oh, effort. You're it's a good effort. Effort. heck of a pitch <laughs> but, <laughs> but had you even naughty with me you weren't forward I got you back so what do we have to do let's we're negotiating it's now. Good. <laughs> I'm gonna sell you a car before it's all said and done <laughs> what do you got Frank may I speak last may you speak last yeah you have another speaker oh. yeah go mine, ahead. mine took a tumble oh. um I, I think that we need to narrow the focus a little bit in the recommendation infrastructure in general is huge and it seems that the primary issue within all of the infrastructure that we're talking about here is national transportation roads and bridges and rail lines that are cross-country not the state of Kentucky not the state of Nevada but I 50 or I 60 or you know whatever that interstate is that is taking a truck from site A to site B that the Department of Energy is using. So I think narrowing the scope of transportation just so that we know that, or narrowing the scope of the infrastructure a little bit will help so that we do, we're not going a million directions. We're trying to rifle this and not shotgun it. Um, the other thing I think is important is that we have you know we don't want one voice we're united so we don't want one person saying it we go to the cab and we're representing several thousand people and when we combine as a cab together we're representing hundreds of thousands of people and if we get the Department of Energy the more weight you have on the Department of Transportation to say 
these are important issues, they need to be fixed, you know, setting it up that way, not as just, hey, infrastructure is a problem of just kind of narrowing in of we, we support one specific thing of infrastructure or one specific area. So, Frank, we're going to let you well, he, he, have... He wants to go last, right? Yeah. He say one thing. <laughs> when I joined Savannah River Site Citizens Advisory Board, we, we were all over the place. We were, we were talking about things that we should never have been talking about. Um, we were just things off-site, um, things in our community. And as a board, we came together and said, we need to become laser-focused. And we really have and we focused on the cleanup mission at Savannah River site. And maybe that background is what's put me into, into this conversation of being laser focused. We're the all chairs board for the EMSSAB. And it's my opinion, and I very well could be wrong and you can disagree with me, is that we should be focused on environmental management and cleanup. And as you, as you so eloquently spoke about the roads and the needs, I get it. I get it. But we are to be laser focused on cleaning up our waste. Shipping the waste is part of it. However, the federal government does, is, encompasses trillions of dollars. And we have a very small percentage of funding of that trillion dollars. And it, staying laser focused on environmental management cleanup and opening, and, and, and this is just me personally now, opening they say, well, we need better recommendation, we need more money for roads that we travel on. That can be interpreted in many different ways. And I don't want it left open for interpretation that this board is okay with any of our monies, any of our cleanup dollars going to Department of Transportation. And so I just, I mean, I understand the need. I don't want to poo poo it. I, I mean, I don't want to belittle it, but I just, I mean, I just don't see this as this board's recommendation. Okay, so having sat and, 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 and tried to listen very carefully to you guys for the last little bit, um, right. here's what I've heard. Um, one is that the strength of this board is their dialogue with DOE. Right, more than recommendations, more than anything else. It's, it's this <coughs> ongoing dialogue with, with folks like Steve and, and Mark and Jeff Griffin in the morning and Dave and, and, and relaying your thoughts. There's, I think we've, we've done ourselves a little bit of a disservice by using the term transportation. This is, a, this is a waste shipment issue. I mean, yes, there's concern for the roads, but the legitimate concern is when we do put something on the road that is hazardous or dangerous, if it's unsafe in any way, shape, or form, is there a chance for somebody to get hurt? And that is not what anyone wants. So the question I think, hearing you guys, is not necessarily a waste shipment presentation from DOE where they often like to tell us, this is the number of trucks and the trains, but how do we ensure that the shipment is safe? How do we know that the path we've chosen is adequate and it's, it, the infrastructure is, is suitable to ship? And if so, if you do see a problem with a failing bridge on a train track that you know DOE uses all the time. What's your what's your path forward? How, who do you contact to say, hey, this is neat? and and let's let them start. We can start the discussion, Steve, with some information from DOE, but clearly defining what we're looking for. Not not the normal waste shipment presentation we get, where they talk about drums and numbers and this and that, but. How do you ensure it's safe so that we can go back to our communities and we can say, yeah, we, we know when you, you know, put the driver on the road and you pat him on the fatty and send him outside the fence, that it's all good and you know where he's getting and it's going to be okay. And if we see from that discussion that there are clear shortcomings, then that's the spot where we can weigh in. And you've engaged DOE and you're going to know how to provide that. Because I think, I think Max and, and Steve are right that this is, this is a concern and, and one bad accident could shut things down for a long time, potentially. At the same point in time, the idea of getting outside your purview can really throw the, the board off. And, and, and so I think we really want to, the answer seems to me to be, stay within our purview, ask DOE the right question and say, come tell us how you do this. Because we want to know as a community how you're ensuring that this is safe and this is this meet requirements. Bob? 
could you interview some of the drivers? They're the ones on the road. They're the ones who are going to know where I the problem I think we do ride-alongs. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Ask them. I mean, not everywhere between Ohio and Nevada is, is going to be a bad road, you know, or Savannah River sure. to Whip. Would they know where the problems are? And I'm, I'm sure there are problems out there. There's bridge problems. There's road problems. I know, you know, when we were at WIP, they said they had problems with some of their access roads. You know, the drivers are going to know where the problems are at out there. And there's not, you know, it, it's going to be a small percentage of the road between Ohio and, and WIP or Ohio and Nevada or Savannah River and Nevada, but they know where those problem spots are. And instead of expecting DOE to know where that's at, they're the ones out there. They're the ones that are going to know. It's a good thought. Good thought. They're going to know where you can get lots of stuff along the road. Well, yeah. Know where all the stuff is. <laughs> Steve? Yeah, I just wanted to say one, one more thing. On the first page of the recommendation, on the third paragraph, this, this is where I'm really talking about it. We have an opportunity here that could be lost in doing some collaboration with other agencies to get this to get this dialogue going. That is, and everything else beyond that is just supporting material. There's an opportunity here. Don't want it to be lost. It doesn't mean that you're going to, again, take stuff away from you. I know you want to be laser focused on EM projects. Well, being laser focused on EM projects does not exclude the public benefit elsewhere with other with other streams whether they be commercial commodities or other hazmat streams it's just like I said it's just getting the dialogue started because it's ripe for it I you know at the risk of repeating myself three days ago on the news Congress and the White House just met they want to talk about two million two trillion dollars for infrastructure improvement it's the opportunity I don't want to see lost to be lost on something that is so specific that it's not out of our purview it's out of our purview because it it, it may be on the other side of the fence but it isn't because our commodities our products are go outside of the fence so that's all this is about. It's to get, the, to get it going, because I don't want to be a doomsayer and naysayer, but at some point, something goes sideways. There's going to be hell to pay for every, from everybody. Thanks, Steve. All right, Frank, how late do you want to, or how last do you want to be? We were, I think we're going to take a, maybe let's do a straw poll and, and see what, if this is an up, down, go forward. Or do you want to, you want to speak before or after that? If, if I might, can I speak before you take your straw poll? Absolutely. That's why I want to see where you want to be. My position at this point was to ask our illustrious facilitator because he began to lead us in a direction. He just mentioned taking a straw poll. The only thing I would say is that we were heartened when Mr. Gilbertson indicated a certain amount of interest in our issue mm -hmm. earlier in the day. Unfortunately, we did hear from um, Mr. Borak concerning his... Uh, scope uh, or lack of purview we've heard a number of comments around the table as far as uh, lack of support although we did hear a rather uh, eloquent speech in, in favor of the activity obviously mr rosenbaum has been a champion for a number of years and uh, and will continue to be so until he is no longer with us but okay, at this done. point you mean on the board <laughs> literally okay. he'll, he'll go to his grave wanting to do this might sleep with one eye open tonight Steve That's yes so anyway one eye. We, we would ask you to facilitate us down some road so we just don't debate this thing to I agree. death I agree Joby I didn't get to be last. <laughs> <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> she was just waiting. Hadn't said yet. What I was wondering to bring this maybe more to the focus of DOE is could we request at our next meeting or at a future meeting to have them present the criteria 
the road conditions, everything that goes into transporting safe loads to wherever. Could they, if they could present, provide us with the experts that decide how much weight is in, or how much air is in each tire, what the criteria is for the drivers, what the bridges are, what the criteria is. How often do they inspect the roads to make sure? I mean, if they could present that, then would that um, make them understand that we're real serious about this? I in mean, a way of sure. not telling them to go talk to the Department of Transportation. I, well, we could certainly have a presentation on that. It's a, it's a whole office who only does transportation issues. All right, but by way of like head nods, does that scratch the itch to move this forward in a positive way? Yay, nay. Max still wants to see the recommendation go forward. I, I, I'm, I'm listening to, I'm listening to the arguments, and I, and you, you said well, you, we didn't have, any, you didn't have any jurisdiction over transportation, but then you have a group within DOE that deals with transportation. We don't have the jurisdiction over infrastructure issues dealing with transportation. And I'm with Gil, laser focus within cleanup within your, your certain site. I'm in complete agreement with him. And I, but I'm not hearing is we're not making a recommendation to take funding away from any site cleanup. And I haven't heard you mm -hmm. stipulate that we're not making a recommendation. Because if you do, then I'm going to say no to it because we're only hurt, we're negotiating against ourselves and okay. I would never do that. But I'm asking for external dollars from other pots of buck, from other buckets. And it, to me, it really doesn't matter what bucket it comes from as long as it, it's someone's putting it on the radar and starts addressing the issue. I, I like what Robert said the drivers know the areas that are probably the most hazardous and getting that information and even if they worked on those those roads and had some kind of assessment we talked about risk assessments but yet we don't even talk about the risk assessments on the transportation from site a to site b even within as big as is uh, savannah is i mean look at the roads that you have to you have to travel around there so i think what i'm saying is as long as it's not taken mm -hmm. away from the primary cleanup mission and it's making a recommendation across this across the u.s when it has to do with with uh, uh, waste that someone takes a look at it and see if they can identify high risk road and put a plan in place to start addressing it before we have an accident that's what i'm really saying would would you be willing to lead a small group in restructuring this recommendation to say that I will I will work with Steve because he's the author of this if that's the case fantastic Gil I'm gonna ask if you would consider helping with that I think it I think if we can get <laughs> no okay, not close okay Max I just want to just, I, just I, wanna, mean, I, I would be a hindrance to the project no but but I want to I want to get to some place where you're at least borderline comfortable and if I can get both of you to where you're at least Our somewhat happy I mean Steve and you see my underlying um, disagreement is that's inside the fence outside the fence to. okay I just, so I, that's going to be a problem. So I would just be a hindrance. Okay. I just want to just clarify. So I, the reason that I am focused on scope and not going outside the scope, and I appreciate that all of you think kind of outside the box, is as a bureaucrat, I have a limited level yeah. of understanding of just about everything. But <laughs> <laughs> what that does is wicked chilly, though. <laughs> it, it keeps me focused. It keeps the board focused on the issues sure. related to EM cleanup. And the reason that we don't go outside the issues that yes they're just recommendations and they don't they don't have any teeth and we could just make recommendations on anything but the more this board recommends things outside their scope the less useful this board is okay and so the more notice this board gets of well they gave us a recommendation where our response is going to be go talk to the department of transportation we don't do that yeah. and the more recommendations like that we do the less people see the value of this board so that's my job to make sure that doesn't happen Susan? I really like your idea of having a presentation on road infrastructure inside, and I would like to see that happen at the next meeting. And I would challenge the chairs and vice chairs to come up with appropriate questions that we would like to see answered in that presentation. And we can do that on a full call, or we can send them 
to mm -hmm. Dave or however we want to do it, and that will help us determine what within uh, it, it to move forward on this at all. I'm concerned too. We have waste that goes other places. We have waste that comes to to our site, but um, I I agree that we need to hear from the Department of Energy of what they're doing now. What are we? And I don't know that. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Stan? I mean, I, I think we could get a, I would feel happier to n understand more where DOE is coming from on this. And I, I think a presentation is the appropriate uh, uh, format, and we can ask a lot of questions. Uh, you mentioned liability. Um, mm -hmm. Susan, I think we need to know what where, what the risks that they encounter are. And then I think we might, I mean, I think there might be some uh, way in which we can put together an appropriate recommendation for, for the uh, EMSSABs in general that doesn't focus necessarily on specific, uh, a specific site, but might have some examples from different sites that we could draw on. So I, I think we need another step before we're at the point where we can really do drafting and okay. uh, find the words to, to convey our concerns. Frank, you're shaking your head. Um, I probably won't speak last, so are mm -hmm. there others? Mr. Howard. Yeah. 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 yeah, Doug. Doug Howard, SRS Cab. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I spent 28 years in the military, and um, whenever we moved a vehicle from one point, from point A to point B, there was always a risk assessment done, regardless of the load that was being carried. And if we think that with these high level loads that are being taken from one place to another is not going through that process, then I think we are very, very naive. Now, I think this administration has already made a point of the fact that infrastructure, the roadways, the railways are going to have a priority. So uh, are we trying to double tap on this or, 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 or what, you know? That's, that's tough. Okay, so question for you guys. And um, let's just kind of go around by, by sites. I, I think our options are, do we want to see a rewrite of this by in the morning? or do we need to hold off and wait for a presentation? Um, so, and if it's a, uh, yes. Illustrious yes. facilitator, could you offer a third option is to just kill it? This is my baby, but I think that should be an option. Okay. Because if it's not viable, then I don't think this board needs to waste its time any further. That, that's fair, and I appreciate you, you're willing yeah. to do that. So, three options, we can just kill it. Um, we can um, move towards a, a presentation and gathering more information, letting, uh, letting uh, Dave know what we're looking for to try to, or we can do a rewrite of what's there. I think All the right. question's got to go to Dave. Dave. The question's got to go to Dave. Is it, no, that's, it's up to y'all. Is, <laughs> is it a purview issue? I mean, it's a, it, I think as it's written now, it's probably not in our purview, but that one of the, the, the option is not to look at it as, as it is now, so either rewrite, get a presentation, or or kill it. Okay. okay. So, um, what if we start with you, ma'am? Um, Which preference? Pre presentation. I want presentation. more information. Okay. Frank? Rewrite. One vote for C. For board. For board. Rewrite. To learn more. To learn more. Presentation. Okay. I want to learn more. Okay. Presentation. Same thing. Bill? Same for me. All right. Presentation. Kill it. Kill it. All right. So we had a couple <laughs> strong advocates, strong deterrents, but um, it looks like the majority of the board would like to see a presentation. So um, tag. Don't You're it. Okay. <laughs> so let's do that. And, and I think what we can do is we can definitely make sure that the presentation is set up in a way that it's within purview. And I think for the, the good news is the minutes of this meeting and the report out is clearly going to re reflect that this is, a big, this is the biggest discussion we've had today, mm -hmm. is where this falls and where this. So it's, there are going to be questions and people are going to want to know what's going on. So even though we didn't pass a recommendation, 
you know, people are going to hear about, but what Gil said and Max said, and that, that that's it. That's a good thing. I mean, that that's the that is the strength of this board is differing opinions and being able to bring them together and work together, and then go have barbecue tonight, right? <laughs> so, we have uh, two bits of homework. So the intent is for the, uh, the chairs to send in questions. Yes. To well, we'll, frame we'll have um, we'll have a couple of planning calls before the next meeting, and we can discuss uh, on, on, okay. on the call. Okay. We can do that. All right. So, a couple things. We need the uh, the two groups that are working to rewrite recommendation one and two. If you can stick around for a little bit, James is going to help get you set up and get you cleaned up and squared away. Um, today was a good day. Yeah. You did a lot of stuff. It was a long, hard day. Um, so, tonight, um, James and his folks, Gil and their folks, are hosting the uh, reception tonight. Is there a. The same folks. The same folks? James and I are like the same folks. Same person? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, you said James and his well, folks and Gil. We're, we, we have the same folks. We don't put him with other people. All right, so <laughs> is, there an, is there an address for tonight? Not anymore. Not anymore? Never mind, I killed him. <laughs> so, what's, what's the uh, spot? You go out here, you take it right on 13th Street, you go over the bridge, it'll be on the left hand side, it's a big baseball park. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. All right, it's got a map, it's in there. Um, 630? 630? He said, James said it's probably drivable. Yeah, I would just Probably drivable. Casual dress, right? Wear your casual dress, Gil. Wear your casual dress. Awesome. Hey guys, thank you for tonight. We'll see you in the morning, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks.